Checking out the Bait Talk for You Radio. When I want to hear the hottest debates in the country, I stay tuned. Shout out to Sal doing his thing. Keep doing the great work, man, and I'm going to keep tuning in. Grace and peace, Hebrews and Shebrews. It's your brother, Mikael Ben Yisrael, coming at you from the walls of Jericho, biblical and historical studies. Checking out my man, Sal Showtime, who got the number one debate show in the nation, Debate Talk for You in the Lions Den. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. One thing's for sure, the spirit of truth does flow through these airways. So with that, I'd like to say shalom, shalom. Uh, all praises to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and the Mashiach, Jesus the Christ. Peace. 
All praises, all honor, all glory to the supreme intellect of the universe. This is Nasi Yashuva of Shom Reha Torah in Atlanta. And if I'm not reading my Torah or suplexing some false deity, I'm listening to my man, Sal Showtime, and Debate Talk for You Radio. Beautiful. Keep doing the good work, brother, bringing forth the information and spreading that love. Shalom, Israel. Next Thursday, April 2nd, only one place to be, and that's Harlem, New York, at the Alhambra Ballroom. It's the Passover. It's going down. The ISUPK and the Commander General Yohanna, we do it big, we go hard in the paint. It's the 46th annual Passover. Bring your donations at the door. We're going to eat the lamb. We're going to eat the unleavened bread. We're going to drink the wine. We're going to wear our wool like a pair. A.K.A. Bust the Bible Like a Rifle. I just want to give a shout out to my man, Sal Showtime. Keep doing your thing on Debate Talk for you, where everybody want to hear the best debates around the globe. Peace and blessings, family. This is your good, humble brother, Bassem, representing the DMV area. And when I'm not holding down my mid-level position in corporate America, I'm tuned into the most respected debate show on the globe. That's debate talk for you with the esteemed host, Sal Showtime. You don't want to miss the best debate show via internet? Debate Talk Radio. Check out the schedule for Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time or at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. To check out the archives, go to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash debate talk the number four and the letter U. You can listen via phone or via Skype by dialing that number 646-716-7320. Again, that's 646-716-7320. You can also go to iTunes in the podcast section. Just type in the search box debate talk the number four and letter U and you'll see the show pop up absolutely free you check out season 1 all the way up to the present season and enjoy the entire show so keep a lock on the Bay Talkie Radio check us out you are now inside the lion's den <laughs> Welcome to the Be Talk Free Radio. Hey, what's going on? This is Felix, also known as Enoch, student at Absolute Bible Truth. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Sal Showtime and Debate Talk for You. I'm a frequent listener, been listening since season one. Uh, keep doing your thing. And for everybody out there who can hear this, Send in your donations so the big talk for you could go on for a long time. All right, y'all. Peace. Hi, this is Tyrone Thompson, host of the Blog Talk Radio broadcast, Talk Real Solutions. Please tune in and listen to all of our shows seven nights a week at 9 p.m. 
Eastern Standard Time. At Talk Real Solutions, we cover a variety of topics to ensure we speak about what may be needed in our community at any time. Talk Real Solutions is the hottest blog talk radio show going on right now. You can listen to our broadcast at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash talk real solutions or visit our website at www.talkrealsolutions.com. Also like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash talk real solutions. You can call in at any time during the show and add to the conversation and offer your solutions at one eight five eight three five seven eight four five three. That's one eight five eight three five seven eight four five three. Because at Talk Real Solutions, we want to make sure you have a chance to talk real solutions. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh el This is Mikael, coming straight out of Cali. And when I'm not chasing some demon back to outer space to find another race, I'm listening to debate talk for you. Keep pleasing the Most High, Sal. Hebrew war machine. Drop bombs on them. This is Renald Francois, representing from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm not busy in the studio, I'm checking out debate talk for you radio. Keep up the great work, Sal Showtime. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 5 of the Bay Talk View Radio. I'm your host, Sal Showtime, and we are back with another classic show for you guys. Once again, we are back. It's the Bay Talk for You time. I appreciate all the people that's calling in via phone or via Skype while dialing that number, 646-716-7320. I appreciate those people out there that call in 10 minutes, 15 minutes ahead of time, that's waiting patiently for the Bay Talk for you to come on the air, the dedicated listeners all across the globe. I appreciate you guys, and uh, much love to you, everybody that calls in via phone or via Skype. Of course, all the international listeners out there, I appreciate you as well for listening into the show. We have people actually waking up to the Bay Talk View Radio. It's a morning show for some people. So for those people that, that are waking up to the Bay Talk View early in the morning, get ready, get ready to take down some notes. I appreciate you checking out the show live, the Bay Talk View Radio, and of course everybody on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that's checking out this show. I appreciate you being here in attendance live. Check it out, the Bay Talk for you. If you're on Facebook and listening to the show inside a group, do me a favor, put it on your personal page, share it, and let people know that the Bay Talk for you is live and on the Air, and make sure you attach that number. You know what it is, 646-716-7320. Let them know that this is the show where you listen to the audience can chime in at any given time by pressing the number one. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what you got to say about these topics. So, again, it's debate talk for you, Tom. I have a few people that's going to be calling in, but uh, this show is basically dedicated to the listeners out there, the, the, the people that tune in via phone and via Skype. Originally, I was supposed to have a roundtable discussion on this particular uh, topic, and for those that are on the phone and Skype, the title of the show, One West Camps, Destructive or Productive? Once again, today's show is entitled, One West Camps, Destructive or Productive? As I was saying, I was supposed to have a, uh, maybe two, uh, two months ago, yeah, I was supposed to have a roundtable discussion. However, I had some uh, difficulty getting certain people that I wanted to get on the roundtable due to scheduling the difficulties. You know, everybody got certain things going on in their lives, so I was unable to bring everybody together on one date and uh, have them come on. I was going to have some uh, people from the IUIC come on. Uh, I spoke to my brother uh, from the GOCC as well, uh, uh, Gabar. And a couple other brothers wanted to come on, uh, you know, to have a discussion on this topic. However, again, due to people's schedules, they couldn't make it on those particular days. So what I decided to do was instead of scrapping the whole show altogether, I just wanted to open up the forum to the people out there to hear what you guys got to say about this particular topic, the One West Camps. And if you're out there, you are part of the One West Camps, you know, you could definitely call in. It's all about you guys calling in. You know, uh, the number is 646-716-7320. I mean, what do you guys think about the One West Camps? Uh, you know, I'm in New York City, and, of course, everybody knows they have a lot of different uh, camps out here in the NYC. And, uh, you know, they're definitely out there doing the work in the streets out there, you know, 
put, is pushing a message and uh, things of that nature. But there's a lot of different people who have a different opinions on the One West Camp. So this show is dedicated to you, the people out there. If you want to chime in and let your voice be heard on this particular topic and uh, you know what you know, what's your knowledge when it comes to the One West Camps, so we can discuss that and uh, we can make it an open forum for the people out there. But I did invite a few speak people last minute to call in. I see some people pressing number one right now. I'm gonna find out who they are. But again, if you want to chime in, the number is six four six seven one six seven three two zero. All I ask is when you call in, keep it clean, keep it professional. We have thousands of listeners that tune in all across the globe. Some have the you know children checking out the show, and some even the elderly. So if you're calling in, keep it clean, keep it professional. We want to hear your opinions. We want to hear what you guys got to say. And if you again, if you're a part of the One West Camps, we definitely want to hear from you. Again, the number is six four six seven six four six seven one six seven three two zero. But of course, before I begin the show, you already know I got to go through a few brief announcements. As usual, send me an email at debatetalkforyou at gmail dot com. That's debate talk the number four and letter u at gmail dot com. Go to facebook dot com forward slash debate talk for you. That's facebook dot com forward slash debate talk for you. You can download the show via iTunes. Go to the podcast section and just type in the search box debate talk the number four and letter u, and you'll see the show pop up absolutely free. You can download it to your PC, your tablet, your iPad, whatever you have. And check out the Bay Toffee Radio. Again, I highly recommend that you subscribe to the iTunes Podcast. And uh, what I like about the iTunes Podcast is, is, first of all, it's absolutely free. You know, there's no charge for that, so you can just subscribe, and it's absolutely free. Second of all, you can check out Season 1 all the way up to Season 5 of the Bay Toffee for you. That's a lot of shows you can check out. And another thing I like about the iTunes Podcast is that once the show is over, if you give it 10 or 15 minutes, it automatically uploads to your system. So, again, I highly recommend that you subscribe to the iTunes Podcast. If you have iTunes, just go to the podcast section and simply type in the search box debate talk for you and then subscribe. Go to Instagram.com slash debate talk for you. We have some videos up on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com forward slash debate talk for you. Of course, we're on Twitter at Showtime DT for you. That's Showtime. There's in David. There's in Tom. The number four and what are you? Here we go with the disclaimer. Keep in mind, I invite a variety of special guests on the show. So whatever information you hear, I highly recommend that you take notes and find time to do your own independent research just to make sure the information is valid. Feel free to call in. We must hold our elders, teachers, and scholars accountable for the information being brought to you in all public venues. The sole purpose for debate talk for you is for you listeners, for you listeners to call in with your questions and your comments, to hear new information, take notes, call in for answers, and most of all, do your own independent research. Also, number, number one rule, like I said earlier, the number one rule on the show is there's no foul language. We keep it clean, keep it professional, unless we professional. Help support the show by sending your donations through PayPal. Go to www.paypal.com to use the email donations at debatetalkview.com. If you like the show, we need your support to expand and to grow. Uh, your continued support is appreciated no matter the amount, whether it be a dollar, five, or ten or more. Remember, you are making it all happen. You can sign up at Blog Talk Radio. It's absolutely free and never miss another show. Once you sign up, type in the search box, Debate Talk For You, and you will automatically be notified via email and smartphone of all upcoming shows. We want to hear from you, the listening audience. Send in your audio shout-outs today. All you need is a voice recorder, which you can find on any smartphone. As some of you heard during the beginning of the intros of the show, you heard some of the shout-outs. We like to hear from the people out there. We want to play your shout-outs live on the air. Let's see your name, where you're from, and what you like about the show. When you're done, send it to the email, debatetalkforyou at gmail.com. That's debatetalk, the number four, and letter U at gmail.com. And I will play it live for all to hear. Show your love and sending your audio shout out today. For a very small fee, you can advertise your business, your live events, your website, etc. right here on Debate Talk Free Radio. Trust me, no one else will allow you to advertise for the low cost I will offer you guys. Again, there's people out there that's advertising uh, for hundreds of dollars. They're charging your people hundreds of dollars just to advertise on their forum. I mean, I'm all about helping the people out there. It's nowhere even near $100. It's definitely affordable. So, again, if you want to advertise right here on Debate Talk for You, uh, send me an email at debatetalkforyou at gmail.com and I'll give you all the full details. In order for the Bay Talk for you to expand, we need each and every listener to subscribe to the Facebook page, to the YouTube channel, and even the official blog talk page. We love the fact that you listen to the information. However, we need your subscription. We need you to show, to show the world that we have a strong and loyal following. Help take the show to the next level and be a loyal follower of the Bay Talk for you. Only you can keep us relevant. This is the Bay Talk for you news before we get this thing started. Let's let the people know out there. Um, season 5, we actually we have a, a finale date for Season 5 of the Bay Talk for you. And uh, hold on, let me drink a little water real quick. 
And uh, season five will officially end Friday, May 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's Friday, May 1st at 8 p.m. is going to be the last show for season five of the Big Talk for you. However, I have some great shows lined up uh, for these last few weeks of the show. We're going to have uh, maybe one or two debates and everything before we uh, sign off. And, uh, you know, actually, I uh, <laughs> this brother reached out to me, uh, Don Johnson, who's a Sunday Christian, and he wants to get in the ring with a couple of Hebrew brothers. And, uh, you know, this guy actually, actually be uh, maybe one of the few times that we have a Sunday Christian to come on the forum uh, to debate. So uh, I'm, I'm, t- I'm trying to find out who's going to be the right contender, depending on the topics uh, that he wants to debate. Well, we're definitely going to hear from the brother. Uh, he's pretty, you know, very uh, good brother. And uh, we're definitely going to hear a good debate before we sign off from Season 5 of the Big Talk for you. Again, Season 5 is going to end Friday. May 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We may have a summer special in July. You know, we always uh, try to have summer specials mid-July, but about two weeks. And uh, we're going to officially begin Season 6 of the Big Talk for you, Friday, September 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So, you know, just to keep you guys posted on what's happening, we're definitely going to have the finale May 1st at 8 p.m., and then we're going to come back with Season 6. September 11th, so make sure you write that down. Uh, this week we have no show on Thursday. We'd have a show on Friday neither. You know, so there's no shows. Uh, you know, after today there ain't going to be any shows until next week. And next week we're going to have a show Monday, April 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Our special guest will be Laron Campbell. And the title of that class will be The Lord Shall Bring You Back Into Egypt in Ships Misinterpreted. All right. <laughs> once again, once again, uh, that show is going to be entitled "The Lord Shall Bring You Back into Egypt in Ships Misinterpreted." You know, uh, we're going to hear what the brother got to say, what kind of lesson he's going to pre- present to the people, but it's going to be very interesting. And again, it's going down Monday, April sixth at eight p.m. And then we're going to have a show on Friday. That's going to be April 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Special guest is going to be uh, Shamaya Ben Israel. He's going to be here. He's going to be back on the forum live to be talk for you. And the title of his lesson will be "The Hidden Truth About the Quran." The hidden truth about the Quran. So you know, you know. I, of course, I invite all Muslim, all brothers, all brothers representing Islam. Make sure you call in that night. Want to hear from everybody out there? And uh, you know, I may fill in the slide. You know how the bait talk you do. Sometimes we come up with different shows. So make sure you keep up with the schedule. And uh, we may have a show Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday too. But uh, right now, officially, it's Monday and Friday next week. We have uh, officially uh, two shows scheduled, but, you know, keep it locked on the Bay Talk for you. All right, guys, so let's see who's on the phone lines right about now. And, again, today's show is entitled, for those people that just called in, it's called One West Camps, Destructive or Productive. We want to hear from everybody out there. You know, what do you guys think about the whole One West Camp movement? Uh, we want to hear from the people out there. You know, uh, again, when you call in, keep it clean, keep it professional. Again, I apologize for those people that were looking forward to that roundtable. We had a, we tried to set up a few months ago. However, we couldn't get everybody on the same uh, date, or, you know, to agree to be here for the roundtable. So we dedicate this show to the listening audience out there, the people that wanted to hear about, you know, this topic, the One West Camps, destructive or productive. Share your opinions live. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. By the way, the chat room is officially open. If you want to gain access to the chat room and chat with me or the people that's inside the chat room itself, you have to go directly to Blog Talk Radio and gain access. You have to go to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash debate talk for you. Click on the show, One West Camps, Destructive or Productive. And once you scroll down all the way at the bottom, you're going to see like a little box there, and you're going to see a few people in there right now. You're going to have even more people calling in. And again, you know, the number is 646-716-7320. Let's see who's on the phone line. Let's go to six seven eight five four four. You're live in the air. Yeah, it's the Water Swordsman. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, the Water Swordsman? It's one of the brothers I invited to come on tonight live at the Bay Talk for you. What's happening, brother? I'm I'm good. How you doing, man? Uh man, ready to hear the, you know, ready to hear your your perspective and everything, man. But uh, we got some more people pressing number one. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's see, it's, it's already turning into a round table type of thing, you know. Let's go to the phone line and see who else is uh here. Let's go to six five one two zero six. Who am I speaking to? Yo yo, it's your boy Nasi Nasi Mitzvah. I'm out in Minnesota. Hey. hey, what's going on, my brother Nasi? How you doing, man? Appreciate you being here. It's all, it's all good, bro. First time here. It's a blessing. Yeah, no doubt, man. You know, very important topic. Uh, how did you hear about this uh, particular segment? Let let the people know. Oh, my brother, my brother Shala. Okay, okay. <laughs> I appreciate you being here, man. All right, so let me open up another phone line. Again, you know, people, if you want to call in, the number is six four six seven one six seven three two zero. Let's go to four one four three three nine. Who am I speaking to? Shalom, shalom. Peter Hesse Ben Yehuda. Okay, what's going on, Ben Yehuda? How you doing, my brother? 
Pretty good, pretty good. All right, we're going to go to the other phone lines. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Yeah. See my son over here. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let's go to the other phone line. Let's go to 202-704. Who am I speaking to? Oh, this is Brother Chris. You, well, you know me as Brother Chris, but this is not Ben Israel. Hey, what's Hold happening? On, I, appreciate you, I appreciate you being here, man. Definitely, man. I appreciate you being here on the forum. Debate tour for you. And we have one more person pressing number one. We're going to get it started right after this. Let's go to 713-486. Who am I speaking to? Hey, Shalom, Brother Sal. This is Deraki Koob. Hey, what's happening, man? appreciate you being here, brother. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go, you know, and uh, figure out what's your perspective on this particular topic. Do you uh, think the One West camps are uh, productive for our people or if it, is it destructive? You know what I mean? So I might as well start off with you, my brother, um, 713. Uh, what do you think about the whole One West camps and, uh, you know, what it's all about? Let's go, what you think about that? Let's share your perspective with the people. All right. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I believe that the uh, camp doctrine and uh, movement has been destructive for our people. Uh, for, first and foremost, uh, when you look at the origins of it, it was based off uh, false interpretations of the Bible and the brothers who actually started it, they didn't sit down and study to show themselves approved. They just flipped some things together and tried to line some things up with the Bible uh, in history, and they didn't match up. So from the on start, you know, it threw everything off, and now we have these non-Israelites in these congregations. We have these false doctrines, these false ideologies. And now it's a bunch of a turmoil and mess within the Hebrew or black community, and it's a lot to recover from. And I'm, I'm glad that brothers like uh, Paneshi and the other brothers on this forum are stepping up and actually bringing out uh, factual information, accurate history to destroy that doctrine because it needs to be destroyed and put to rest. All right, man. I appreciate that. And uh, stay here. We're going to keep you here, you know, for, uh, to, uh, you know, we're going to ask more questions to you. But uh, I have some other people that's supposed to call in. If you're out there, we have a lot of the, the, the switchboard is lit up right now. So if you're all out there, you know who you are. My special guest that I invited you guys, the number is 646-716-7320. Press the number one, and we can add you in the conversation. However, we're going to go, uh, you know, back and forth right about now on the panel for the people that already pressed the number one. Let's go to my brother Nasi right here. Um, Nasi, what do you think about the one of us camps? Is it productive? For our people, you know they out there, you know out there doing the work, or is it destructive for our people? We know what you don't agree with the things that they're doing. What do you think? Well, I'm gonna say 97, 98 percent of it is destructive, and I say about two percent or one percent is productive. Concerning on the productive side is concerning that we are the children of Israel that they teach. The destructive side is the 12 tribe chart that's completely false and is an error from top to bottom and hate the white man, who is Esau, Esau the white man doctrine, all of this stuff is misleading the whole nation of Israel to the pit. It's very important that we touch topic on a lot of this stuff concerning on what's taking place in Israel, you know, um, on the facts on where the chart came from. I mean, you got people calling themselves certain tribes when it's completely false, but, uh, you know, we'll take care of that when it's time. But, uh, yeah, it's completely destructive. But you got 1%, 2%. That's productive. All right. Oh, uh, man, that's my brother Nasi right there. All right, let's go to Water Swordsman. You know, Water Swordsman is a regular on the Bay Tour for you, and he actually represented in the TRS Carbon Radio uh, brand versus brand debate. You know what I mean? Appreciate the brother being on the panel. Uh, Water Swordsman, what do you think about that? Uh, uh, the One West Camps, is it productive for our people? You know, is it a destructive thing for our people? Are they helping us in any way, shape, or form? What's your perspective when it comes to the One West Camps? All right, I'm going to tell you like this. I'll, that What I was taught from them elders, they took scriptures from the Bible. That knowledge was the best knowledge I ever heard in my life. I done took it in many forms. It can't be confounded. It, the understanding on the 12 tribes is accurate, and it was the Holy Spirit that gave it to these men. What have corrupted things are men's garbage, okay, and Satan working in men. But that knowledge is pure, okay? And, of course, with every tree, there's rotten fruit. And that doctrine and that understanding was pure, and it's going to flourish, and it's going to take over the earth. That's all I got to say on that. All right, so so far we got two brothers saying that it is destructive, 
and we have one brother so far that's saying it is productive. Again, we go down. We're gonna go down the phone lines again. You can chime in, people. If y'all listening via phone, Skype, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, just press number one. We can add you to the conversation. The number six four six seven one six seven three two zero. I see somebody else pressing number one. We're gonna get to you guys. We're gonna go down the line right down the switchboard for now. For those people that originally pressed number one and uh, hear their perspective on this particular topic, let's go to. Hmm, Let's go to 414-339. Uh, what's your perspective on uh, One West Camp? Is it destructive? Is it productive? What do you think? Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I got you. I, I got you. Loud and clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. okay um, when it comes to the One West Doctrine, I love my brothers. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be, I want to be hard on them, but I really can't because I look at it from a perspective as this. The one which camps and the doctrine, they work for a certain period of time. And since the information was never updated or, you know, uh, uh, the information was never filtered through any kind of uh, 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 um, systematic scholastic work, it it, it became unfruitful and it's outdated. You know, it was that doctrine came out in the late 1960s. It's 2015. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know what I'm saying, the doctrine is destructive because it's outdated. Uh, nobody is really, uh, nobody's really going off the scriptures, if you read the scriptures. There's a lot of cherry picking going on where you get a lot of uh, situations where it's like uh, how the Christians treat uh, John 3.16, how they, how they just blurt it out, they just say it. That's how Hebrews do a lot of scriptures, and we need to uh, we need to check ourselves up. Yeah, you still there, brother? Four one four. I'm here. I'm here, well. And, yeah, um, that's right. I heard like a yeah. I just heard like a little, you know, some kind of sound. But yeah, you good now? I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. The uh, the um the good part is this. The part they got right is telling us that we're the children of Israel. Um, you know, that's pretty much it. I say I agree with. I disagree with probably ninety eight percent of the doctrine, and two percent is that you know we're the children of Israel. Other than that. It's really no use of it. All right, so, so far we got three brothers saying it's destructive, and we have one that said it's productive. Again, the form is open to anybody to call in. The number is 646-716-7320. <laughs> Let's go to the next person. Let's go to 202-704. What do you think about the One West Camps? You know, is it helping our people, or is it destructive when it comes to uh, our people? What do you think? Two zero two seven zero four. You there? Two zero two. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? I got you can now. You yeah. There you go. Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. All right. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you know, think? I, I just want to start off. Mm-hmm. And you know, I want to, I want to get respect to my predecessors by saying, you know, that like the Octana Hesse said that they were good for the time being when they first came out because. They have hurt. They have helped certain people. Like you know, it's certain people that had no guidance. And you know, one West gave them some kind of guidance and some kind of hope. So I'm not going to take that away from one West. But when we talk about as a whole and leaving our people stuck, oh yes, one West doctrine is pure destruction. Because you know, I'm not saying that they originally did this stuff out of bad intention. Because like the Aqua, the other Aqua saying, you know, it was pure. But let's deal with some facts. In the late 70s or, you know, in the 60s, when a lot of the elders who started a lot of these doctrines came up, they was dealing with the time period to where blacks weren't even getting a, a good education. A lot of them couldn't even read that well nor comprehend well. So these men, they grabbed the Bible. You know, they probably came across the commandment keepers. They grabbed the Bible. You know, then they just pretty much started forming a whole bunch of doctrines. Like, it's a bunch of doctrines in one West that... If you if you go pre one west, you will not find them doctrines, and they just really want you to stay stuck. Like they can't accept that a lot of things that are being taught are outdated, were inaccurate, or based off incomplete information. So that's why I say that is destructive because when you build a foundation on uncertainty, that foundation is not strong. But you know, it's it's a lot of people who would say different. But you know, I, I also would put it like this. Even with one West doctrine, it's like a five percent of theory that applies to it. Because eighty five percent of people, 
you know, our like lost sheep need to be led. It's ten percent that has a you know a, a decent amount of, of knowledge that can lead people, but they use it to the wrong for the wrong reasons. And it's five percent that see it past all the nonsense. You know, and not to pull my own, but I feel like I'm one of those five percent. But you know, that's just my. But to sum it all up, yeah, it's it's a it's about ninety nine percent destructive. And but at the time it was very productive. But in this new information age, where we can find information that made it took them years and years in a library of study, where we can find that stuff in weeks and months, yes, it's, it's very outdated and destructive. And that's all. All right, well, don't you don't you have to go nowhere. I got more questions for y'all, so definitely uh, stay on the line. Again, we have more and more people calling in. The number is 646-716-7320. I appreciate everybody that's here in attendance checking out the show. We have about, let me see, man, we got some more people pressing number one. I know I can maybe really get to everybody, but uh, let me see. I know I see one of my special guests is here. Uh, hold on, let me see. 315-560. Who am I speaking to? Is this Brother Sha'ala? Yeah, this is Brother Sha'ala. I made it in. All right, man. What's going on? Welcome to the show, my brother. Hey, man. I'm happy to be here. All right, man. Well, you know, you've been on a couple previous shows already, you know, but uh, for those who are new checking out the show, let the people know your perspective uh, about the One West camps. Is it destructive for our people or is it productive for our people? Go ahead. Well, I'm going to just stay in one consent with the other brothers uh, that spoke before me and say, you know, it did have its time when – especially, you know, around 2006 through 2008, 2009, when the the video started coming up on YouTube, everybody was getting excited. I think that was like the, that was like the climax of what the camps was going to do. Now it's it's on to a new phase, a new stage, because uh, for the most part, you know, standing out there, cussing people out, belittling people, ain't no scripture to say that, you know, ain't no scripture to, to have them acting a fool. Uh, out on the highways and byways, and then on top of the behavior aspect of it, we have mis we have misinterpretation of scripture all day. I mean, I'm pretty sure the other three brothers who uh, uh, came by before me can go through man a hundred scriptures a day from this quote. Cause we go we go over them every day. You know, it's constant. So you know, I would say I appreciate the elders that came out there and they did their work. You know. I'm not going to, you know, try to bash them right now. They they had their season, and now it's off to the next stage. So that's all I'm about to say. Yeah, now everybody that, that, that's familiar with the Big Talk, you know that we had a lot of brothers for the One West Camps on uh, past shows. We had uh, Elder Recall. We had uh, the IUIC here, live with the Big Talk for you. We had a whole, you know, we had a lot of different camps already that, you know, been a part of the whole debate tour for you brand as far as uh, being special guests. And they probably listening right now. And, you know, like I said, anybody could call in. If you're hearing this and you want to chime in, the number is 646-716-7320. But right about now, it's looking like more people are saying that it's destructive than productive. And, really, you know, i got some more questions for the panel. So, you know, I'm going to go back, you know, and uh, order and uh, put out another question in a few minutes. But I see we have another person here. Let's go to 661 Hey, air. Grace and peace, Sal. This is your good, humble brother. I just wanted to chime in. You know, uh, I personally kind of see this topic and issue as an in-house topic. You know, a uh, special shout out to Panahisi, who stepped forth and he embraces his ethnicity and he's also very strong into his religion. I'm glad to see tonight's a perfect example of people coming together. I'll say the biggest thing I see with the doctrine is the 12 tribe chart. It just seems a little outdated and inaccurate now that we're in the 20th century, 2015, and there's more evidence historically dealing with the archaeological evidence and things like that. Now, I've seen some camps add some individuals to the current chart. There's others that have changed it and I guess you could say are about to add a 13th tribe. But I see it as an in-house issue, and this is the first step with them brothers coming together and and solving it as as leaders and public figures that are within that community. So I appreciate you taking the call, Sal. All right, Brother Basim, what's going on, man? Uh, Do you want to stay on the panel, or you want to just listen and uh, chime in? You know, whenever you you know whenever you feel free. I'm not going anywhere, Sal. I'm just on mute, brother. 
All right, I got you, man. I got you. I'm going to take one more, man, and after that, I'm going to make this the official panel right now, and then later on, we're going to take some more questions from the people that's tuning in. You know the number, 646-716-7320. We have a whole lot of people checking out the show. Let's go to one more person. Let's go to 770-728. Who am I speaking to? Shalom, I'm uh, this right here is Masada. I was calling in, and um, my perspective of the whole thing is that from one west, a lot of the elders, it was they had a solid foundation, but as they went along through scriptures, using the precepts, they came to understanding, and they were gradually adjusting it to a better understanding through the precepts. Now. We know the history of it. Those who really studied it, or, or those who've been in the school, know the history of it and know where it stands now. And a lot of brothers that are out there today that started from the One West camps, they elevated and they graduated, and they still stand strong. Majority of them. Now, as one of the brothers said, a war. He said that this doctrine is going to flourish. Because through precepts and through precepts and through demonstrating it in other forms, we stand strong with it. So it's going to flourish regardless. And hopefully today, through the power of Yahweh Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shah, it's going to stand again. All right, man. Appreciate your call. All right, so let's go to my man, a water sports, because it seemed like, you know, everybody else out here, the brothers <laughs> representing, you know, the One West camps, you know what I'm saying? We're going to start off with you. Now, water sports, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Now, um, as far as the One West camps, and um, I don't know what camp you were a part of, but you probably could put that out there. And uh, let, first of all, let the people know, you know for those who aren't familiar, who are a part of the One West Camps? Let's start with that. Who are some okay. of the groups part of the One West Camps? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a little summary right quick. Well, me, I've been in the nation a long time. I've been in the nation since I was uh, like 13. I was in a camp at 13. I'm uh, I'm 45. Hey, somebody got to cut down their thing. Yeah, I'm 45 yeah, now. Do me, so. Yeah, do me, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do me a favor, guys. If you have, you know, anything in the background, just do me a favor. Press mute, and uh, you know, we'll put yeah. you back in. You know what I mean? Because I'm hearing some background noise. But yeah, got a water source, man. Got Right. So all the elders that went out in the streets, I used to buy gardens. I knew all of them personally. Ariane, all that. The brother that's running uh, Israel United in Christ, named Netanyahu. Guy, when he first started, I was with him because he called me from Atlanta. But then I branched off to do some other things. The first brothers that came down here in Atlanta of those camps, I'm the one that brought the brother down here, brother by the name of Zafaroff. So I was in his camp way back in the day. He wasn't like that. What you see now, I don't know how that happened. And there's a lot of beautiful brothers that see about this truth, that put this truth out right, that don't represent that, okay? He was like a rebel, okay? After a while when he started getting crazy, he was like, you know, people stopped dealing with him. That's like the bad, that's like the bad fruit of Israel. But the elders like Marsha and, 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 and uh, Arya and, and Yaiqua, the elders that first started, at one time they was on point, okay? But Arya later on, he went and, and went into his pride. And that's how he went off from what he, what he went into. But good doctrine came out of here, man. And it, I, we done went to the streets and went to top scholars. Well, a lot of these cats was in their diapers. These men went before top scholars and confounded them, okay? Now, everybody picking at this truth. But, yeah, they said that's wrong and that's wrong, but nobody's presenting nothing to counteract what them brothers put out. So that's why I'm here to stand for this Bible. And this is the Bible you're going against, not them. It's not their doctrine. This is the word of the Lord. It's not their drop, their doctrine. I went and checked out what they taught me. I didn't just listen to them. I don't follow men. And what they said is the most accurate out of all the teachings out here. That's all I want to say. <laughs> Right, we're going to go down the line and, uh, you know, go around the panel and uh, hear your guys' perspective. But um, as far as the One West Camps, I mean, like you said, you are part of the One West Camps. Um, mm-hmm. What is it that you, in your opinion, what is it that is that people not understanding when it comes to the productive aspect of the One West Camps? What do you think the people are not understanding when it comes to the One West Camps that makes them a, a positive, uh, in your perspective, a positive uh, movement? Uh, okay, well, what would make it crazy, right, is uh... – well, a lot of stuff, people that really go against them camps and the stuff they see, they're right. A lot of stuff is negative. It's men's stuff. Like the brother said before, going against, speaking against the sisters, 
disrespecting sisters, all that stuff. There's a sect of Israelites that we don't do that. That's that's the point they don't get about uh, a lot of brothers in Israel. They're just looking at the negative, and that's what we do. We always blow up the negative, but there's a lot of good brothers that taught this Bible the way it's written and been in great marriages, are totally against the disrespect of sisters and all that, all the negative stuff you see. There's good brothers in this nation, man, but then there's, there's bad fruit too. I'm going to tell you the truth. And what uh, what got the who got the forefront first was the bad fruit, and that's what you see on the Internet. The bad fruit got the head start on the Internet. That's why you see more of the bad fruit. But go ahead, bro. I hope I asked that right. I don't know. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Now, we're going to go to um, my brother Nasi right here. And, again, the number is 646-716-7320. If you want to chime in, again, there's the People Show. If you want to chime in, call in. You know that number, 646-716-7320. Now, what did you feel about what my brother Walsh said, uh, Nasi? Uh, you can share a perspective on that. And do, me, and do me a favor. Have you ever been a part of the One West, any One West camp? Let us know. Okay. Yo, yo, it's your boy, Nasi. Um, I was introduced to this truth from a brother out here in my state. He was teaching on the street. Um, I heard him breaking doctrine, and he told me he went through the curses, let me know I was an Israelite. Was he a part of the One West? Absolutely no. But was his doctrine? Absolutely yes. His doctrine was a part of it. Now, could you uh, elaborate with me more? Could you elaborate with me more on that question? Yeah, did you hear uh, some of the things that the water swordsman was saying about the productive productive aspect of the Water West camps? I wanted to get your opinion on what he was saying about that. Well, when we uh when we deal with the productive side, like I said, I only I only rock with uh two percent on what they did. Other than that, um, I've never met the elders personally, but um. You know, according to research and according to what I see today, as in uh, Geo, you know, uh, uh, Israelite Church God of Jesus Christ, um, also with a with a one of the elders that dealt with One West. Then you have um, Elder Nathaniel that was a part of that stuff. You have uh, a lot of elders branched off into different areas. You know what I'm saying? But starting with um, Israel Church God of Jesus Christ, there was an elder part of One West. He ran into there. And brothers sold out, you know what I'm saying? Brothers sold out over there concerning on a lot of the 501c3, I ain't down with it. Uh, nowhere in the scripture you can find your hoosh doing it, you know what I'm saying? That's way off of the charts. Um, the 12 tribe chart, once again, I touch, I'm always going to touch top topic on that and go hard on that for the fact of it got our people confused. It got our uh, marrying heathens. It got our people going into other, these other nations. They got these other nations. A part of Israel that's not a part of Israel, it's um, it's it's it's, it's a, a distracting, it's disturbing to a lot of people that actually read this Bible and have an understanding, knowing that we come from Negroes, our ancestors was Negroes, but all of a sudden it's a it's 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 mag magically all Indian tribes and only three Negroes. But um, I can touch topic on a whole a whole bunch of other stuff, like like the brother was saying earlier about the One West brothers on the streets. I mean, then you have GMS. You have brothers that came from one West from GMS. And then that brother teaches 2000 that the world was coming to, America was coming to an end. The world was coming to an end, et cetera. And the scriptures clearly said when a, when a prophet prophesied these things and it does not come to pass, he is a false prophet. You feel what I'm saying? Then you got, um, you got the GMS brother. Then you got, um, I, I had it right on the tip of my tongue concerning on, uh, Another one of them elders that uh that that fell off and misled a lot of brothers. Oh, also with all camps, IUIC, a lot of other camps, these people is is, is training training our younger generation to lost sheep to hate one hating one another. You know what I'm saying? These these people can't even talk to brothers. And then you have a lot of pride amongst one West. Then you have uh I sub K General Johanna that was that that's one West, and they say they only got the truth, which is a completely lie. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. That's pride amongst Israel. That's that's pride, and we don't need that amongst the children of Israel. If brothers are gonna break bread and go over scriptures and come to an understanding, the only people that's gonna come to an understanding is the humble. That's it. You have to be humble as a babe to understand this truth. 
and to gain this knowledge and to accept this truth for the Ruach to deal with you, which is the spirit. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of information and, and broken puzzles that we have to, we have to pull back together because of a lot of these elders, because of a lot of these elders. Then you have a lot of pride brothers from that one West today that come, that that's new in the truth. And also that's been in the truth that won't, that, that won't respect what scriptures say. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a headache, bro. It's a it's a headache dealing with brothers. You know what I'm saying? That's not humble. And and what's the point of a debate if a brother can't be humble? You know, you, that's not we, we ain't supposed to handle ourselves like that. We're supposed to conduct ourselves as grown men. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we're supposed to conduct ourselves with humble spirits. Just in case something wrong, something can be proven wrong. Brothers humble themselves down and admit that they're wrong. So I hope today we will be able to do that. That being said, that's all I got, brother. All right, man, this is the show is uh, called One West Camps, Destructive or Productive. We have a lot more people calling in. I see we have a lot more people number one. We're going to get to y'all. We're going to the, get to you guys. But let's go to um, 414. Can you hear me, 414? I'm here. I'm here, bro. All right, man. Uh, uh, did you hear some of the things that uh, my brother Water Swan's been broke down as far, as far as the productive aspect of the One West Camps? Uh, you know, let's hear your dialogue when it comes to that. And also, were you ever a part of? The One West Camps, and if you were, you know, let us know what happened. Okay. Um, I was never a part of a, a One West Camp. Um, like when I came, when I wouldn't necessarily say I came into the truth because I, I always known from a younger age uh, that that the real people of the Bible were black. Like I knew the Israelites were black from a younger age. I went to a Pan African uh, a middle school. You know, I, I knew all about Margaret Garvey and. And all that growing up, so uh, I wouldn't really say that I I came into some kind of enlightenment when I saw a Israelite camp. I was more confused with what they were teaching. So I'm thinking like, okay, we black people, we all come from Africa. Why are they, why are they, why are they teaching us that we're not African? I always thought that was weird. But uh, yeah, I never been a part of no camp. Um, and when it comes to the to the to the fraction of the camp. And the um, and the arrogance that they carry with them, uh, like the brother brought up brought up about IHBK. They say, um, you know, IHBK is the home of the truth. Um, IHBK is associ- is not associated with no other camps. And they also say that if you're not under IHBK and General Yohanna, you're not an Israelite. And they, and they, and they're basically and right now they're basically calling for all the splinter camps to come back to where they started at, which is one West, like uh, uh, GOCC, uh, Israelite United in Christ, uh, 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 the, the Zabak camp out there, AO, AOC, the different camps that, that splinter different members from those from that one West camp and splinter off and, and started their own camp. Uh, you know, I don't think I don't think the brothers are out there misleading people on purpose. I don't think they do it on purpose. I think it's just a it's, it's just a repetition. And it's taught through behavior, like you know how how we went to church on Sunday. We never once stopped and thought, like, should we be going to church on Sunday? We just know that our mothers did it, and their mothers did it. And whenever you hear a one West person talk, they always say, "Well, this is how the elders talk. This is what they talk." You know what I'm saying? They never, it's never any kind of. Uh, they hold the elders to uh, a point of being infallible, and I think that's wrong. Um, any any camp out there with a twelve tribe chart is wrong. Um, well, that's what I I can't really <laughs> I can't really say much else. You know what I'm saying? I've never I've never been a part of those camps. But from my observation, uh, you know, I, I deal with I deal with scholarship and history. You know, so from my observation, from a historical standpoint, a lot of the stuff that they say is laughable. It's laughable, and I and me and me being an Israelite, I want us to be looked at. As you know, as the epitome of scholarship, because that's how our forefathers were. 
Alright, and once again, it's the Big Talk Radio By the way, the chat room is officially open, guys If you want to gain access to the chat room Let's go to the website www.blogtalkradio.com Slash the Big Talk for you And click on the show, One West Camps And at the bottom, you're going to see a little box there Where you can interact with me And people that's inside the chat room You can also type in your questions in the chat room If you don't feel like calling in And I will read it to the panel And if you uh, don't want to do that You can send me an email question At the for you at gmail.com As a matter of fact, I already see people sending me emails With questions and I'm going to read them out later on, but we got to go down the phone. Let me just take one of the callers real quick, because we have a lot of callers. So let's go down to the switchboard real quick, and we take one of these calls here. Let's go to 718-216. Who am I speaking to? Well, this is Sunfire. This is Gamma. All right, my brother. Welcome to the show, man. What do you think about the One West Camps? Let us know your perspective. Well, the One West Camps, um, I come out of One West also in the 1990s, and Basically, what's happening uh, right now, like Paul said, with all the confusion, we're in a time of heresy and the great falling away before the Messiah come back. Um, they've strayed away from the foundation of the Messiah. This is where the confusion is coming from. With Yohananam saying he's a general, this is all heretic doctrine. This is all falsehood. Sahadam is teaching false doctrine. A lot of those guys that's out there, um, they came way after. And like Paul said, we all need to be taught again. Character is wrong. All you got to read is First Peter 3 and 8. They strain away from the principles. Um, same thing going on in the churches, um, music industry, and so on and so forth. So this is where the confusion is coming from. Um, like the Messiah said, this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased, hear ye him. Man is giving their honor and credence to man. They're worshiping man. And a lot of these young guys out there, because we've been out there since the 90s, and they really don't understand what this Bible is talking about. Some of them may be doing it in sincerity. They're not even really reading the Bible like the brother uh, the brother said before. They need to upgrade their teaching. And I understand what the brother's talking about, the 12 tribe signs, when he's talking about the Negro, because all you got to do is get the book Sex and Race. And if you travel to South America, you, you see the real Hebrew Israelites in the shanty town. Um the confusion with the Roman babies, yes, I understand that. You know, with the you know, the mixed breed saying that this is uh Ephraim and all that. Yeah, a lot of that is um they didn't go back and upgrade their teaching and so forth. So the problem is um pride. Um they're not heeding to the council and the foundation. They they're falling away from the foundation that the Mashiach laid was the most high center. And uh, 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 call a spade a spade. Yohanan is teaching false doctrine with truth. The Thunder Aladam is teaching false doctrine mixed with truth. Um, uh, um, Taha is out of his mind talking about raping a woman. So that's a misrepresentation of the Hebrews. They're not the representation of the true Hebrews. All brothers is not like that. What you're getting is the heretics, okay, that's putting out all that confusion. And I'm going to leave it on that note. Uh, we appreciate the call. We appreciate the call, brother. And once again, you know, it's debate talk. You anybody can call in. As a matter of fact, uh, see, we have more people saying that it's, it's destructive. If there's anybody out there to say it's productive, we want to hear from you too. You know the number six four six seven one six seven three two zero. Let your voice be heard live on the air. Debate talk for you, and this show is archived. So if you missed any part of the show, you can always go back and go check it out. But uh, let's take another caller real quick. Let me go to who else is here. Let's go to. Um, Eight three two nine oh eight, you're live on air. Shalom, shalom. This is Yaki calling in. Hey, and, how you doing? How you doing? Um, I'm doing good. Peace and blessings to everyone out there and um shalom. Um, well my question was I hear a lot of the brothers they oppose the One West camp. I recently just got knowledge of them. I never knew they even existed and I've been in the knowledge of for about 10 years, but um, I would have to give them credit for at least waking um, the people up and educating them to the fact that they are Israelites Um, because a lot of people out there, you know, who say that they're conscious or, you know, they have these different ideologies or beliefs, um, you know, they're not necessarily teaching, you know, that the African and American is an Israelite. Um, regarding the 12 tribe chart, 
Um, I've seen the 12 tribe charts that are out and the that a lot of different camps are pushing. Um, I just wanted to know, and my question is for Panahisi, was there, is there any information or um, that has come forth that would uh, debunk the charts that are currently out, and is there any verifiable proof that's um, going to be presented and when? All right, so let's go to the panel. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Brother Charlie, you want to take a shot at that? Go ahead. Oh no, I think that sister had um, a, a question for a specific brother. That wasn't that question oh, oh, wasn't oh, for oh. me. Oh, oh, who's the question for again? I'm sorry about that. Who's the question for? Brother Easy, are you there? Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, uh, all the phone lines are open. All right, good. Yeah, you can answer that question. Yeah. Right. You can answer the question. Uh, her her question, if I'm not mistaken, was: uh, Is there any evidence or any proof to back up the previous or the the current uh, twelve tribe charts? Uh, and the answer is no. Um, and she also said, is there any information that debunks the chart? And the answer is yes. One of the main pieces of information that debunks the chart is your God-given common sense and critical thinking. That's, that's the first thing you use. Your God, your, your most high-given common sense and critical thinking. And I have a brother right now I'm working with. We're working on a project and uh, we're going to disseminate sound evidence, sound proof of who, what people on earth is our people and what people aren't. So be looking for that down the line. We got, I got, we got it working out right now. I have a, um, for the time being, you can check out my Facebook history page. It's called Black African Hebrew History. Just type it in on Facebook, Black African Hebrew History. I got, I got bone, you know, the uh, the comedic and the, the uh, comedic Black conscious community acts for Hebrew Israelite bones and stuff like that. I got Hebrew Israelite bones, graves, uh, DNA tests, artifacts, manuscripts, scrolls. You can, you can find all that on that site on my on my Facebook page for the time being. Uh, sister, do you have any more questions? You could go ahead. Do you have any more questions? Mm-hmm. Um, no, I really don't have any more questions. I just wanted to, I mean, I agree with the brothers um, that a lot of the information coming out of the camps, it's aggressive. Um, it's not fruitful. And so uh, I was just saying that if, you, if you're debunking or um, – Saying that what's coming out is in truth. Just where can people um, that are are looking to know the truth, you know, what resources are out there for them to to study and to you know some truth that can back up um, what the brothers are saying. And so, like he said, that there is a page on Facebook, Black African Hebrew History, that people can go to. And um, just, I was just wondering if there were any other resources because it seems as though resources are uh, tremendously needed because there may be people listening, a part of the camp, and are questioning, you know, the validity of what's being taught from these camps. And so, um, yeah, just resources and information that can, um, I guess, project the truth and in opposition to to what's um, out there. But thank you for answering my question. Yeah, I appreciate the call. Uh, Water Swords, but since you're the only one representing the One West Camps in the, <laughs> right now, you know, anything you want to say about the guy? You can, you, can, you can chime in, guy. Yeah, yeah, I want to say this, right? Um, the 12 tribe chart that was given to Brother Ariel, the elder Ariel, was given through the Divine Holy Spirit. And he and that was recorded from and that was recorded from our ancient forefathers. Jacob, I'm gonna read something. This is Genesis forty nine and one. I'm gonna show you something. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall be for you in the last days. So when you read about these tribes, it talks about their geographical location, their their genetic traits, okay, where they're gonna be in the last days. You can't determine what tribe you are according to your DNA, okay? Because your enemy have your records. They can be tainted. But what the Most High had 
Jacob do, okay, put, do the Holy Spirit is put the different traits of his son and what they what, somebody somebody talking. That's what I want yeah, man, I'm going to have some stuff in the background, guys, in the background. Let's put it on mute. Uh, got a water source, man. Right. So what he did through the Holy Spirit, he put the Spirit on Jacob to tell what his sons, which became tribes, were going to be and how they're going to act and their traits in a light of day. And you should be able to look in this Bible and read about these tribes and see what tribe you identify with. Like even with, with Esau, for instance, right, when you read about Esau, you have his trait, you have his skin color, and you have the prophetic things that were going to happen that it was going to extend to the last days. And this is how you identify who's who according to Scripture. It's not genetic uh, information. It's prophecy. That's why, let me read this. This is uh, Second Ezra in Apocrypha 14, verse 22. It says, but if I have found grace before thee, Ezra the prophet, it said, but if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, unto me, and I shall write all that have been done in the world since the beginning. That's what the prophet. 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 That's what the it says, which were written in thy law that men may find their path and that they which will live in the latter day may live. That's why these prophecies were written. So when we remember, the Most High knows the future. He wrote the future. So we got lost. How do we get back to who we are? It's more than this than just knowing that we come, we're black or so-called Negro. Yeah, what tribe you come from? What traits fit you? Why do you do this? Why do so-called North American Indians do what they do. Why they wear what they wear? Why they act the way they act? We all have different spirits. Why do so-called Puerto Ricans act the way they act? I gotta explain all that stuff to me. Why do Negroes do what they do? Why do so-called Negroes love to drink? Why? What are these traits of these different people that we all look alike and in the same condition? So you're talking about these little so-called Spaniards, the ones that have been conquered by Spaniards that are light or white. No, you go to these different lands, Puerto Rico, Colombia, they look just like you and I. That's all I want to say. I know somebody want to reply to that, but let me yeah, let me see four one four number again. Hold on, okay, I think we good now. There we go, four one four. Um, who wants to answer that? I want to reply to that as far as the twelve tribe charge. Uh, anybody could time in this one at a time. Though. Who want to? I answer that. Wanna, yeah, I want. Okay. Hold right. up, can I get All in right. on that? Everybody want to get on that, man. We are. Yeah. yeah. Can I get in on that? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. my phone on. dropped. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. Be let your phone drop. Okay. I'll let you reply first. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Well, okay. basically, mm-hmm. you know, I want to address because you said that the chart was divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. I must totally disagree with that because when you read anything in Genesis 49, none of them give a geographical location except for verse 13 when it talks about Zebulun shall be brought unto Zidon. Now, how somebody in their right mind can get Panama is brought unto Zidon, that beats me. So, what they do is they take the top of Genesis 49 where it says the last days and they equate everything in the scripture as if it's a prophecy. Now we know prophetic words start off with something like will or shall. And if you read anything in there, you'll notice when the prophecy is like, I'm going to give an example because they like to say Simeon and leave our brothers. So I'm going to go to Genesis 49 right quick. Bear with me. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, you know, it's supposed to, something before them in the last days. Now, it says, verse 5, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their possessions. Now, so far, it's, it's no prophecy being given. You know, that is not representing that they're going to be on the island of Hispaniola together. All that is pure garbage and interpolation. Then it says, O my soul, come not thou into their secret, I mean, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, my honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self pit they dig the wall. So it's everything right there is still past tense, talking about an event that just happened. None of this is prophecy yet. Now it says, Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce. Still talking about a, an event that already happened. And it said, For their wrath it was cruel. I will divide them and scatter them in Israel. Now that was the prophecy that they'll be 
divided and scattered among the tribes. And, and was and was that fulfilled? Yes, it was, because Levi didn't have no inheritance, and he lived among every one of the 12 tribes. And Simeon, their inheritance was in Judah, and they were scattered among every tribe in Assyrian captivity. Now, another reason why I disagree on why the chart is false top to bottom, only thing, only validity that it has is that Israel is a black nation. But, you know, first off, I guarantee you, if any of them One West brothers, or, you know, brothers come from the One West school of thought, if any of their wives birthed a baby that looked like a North American Indian, them boys would be on my quicker, my quicker than a match strike. So what I'm trying to figure out is how are you guys saying when all Jacob wives was black and of, the, of similar stock, Syrian stock, you know, Syrians, they, they look like us. Jacob was a Syrian. Uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, half Egyptian, half Hebrew. I'm trying to figure out how did Jacob, how did his sons end up 75, 80% Hispanics? Like now, the way that they act, now that's that's on them. Just because they got smashed and assimilated, that don't make them Israelites. Just because they have the same enemy as the white man, that don't make them Israelites. Everybody and everything on this planet is the enemy of the white man. The water that, that we drink is the enemy. You said what? Can I, respond to that? Can I respond to that? Go ahead. Okay, this is what I say when I teach, right? Okay, you took away. I want you to act. So the Puerto Ricans, the so-called Puerto Ricans, are not the tribe of uh, Ephraim. And as you said, the so-called Haitians are not the tribe that you said are not. Who are they? And I need your facts where you got it. Because if you're going to take away, I need you to add something. So if that's wrong, then what do you have as evidence? And who are they today? I want to hear your perspective and what proof you have, who they are today then. All right, like as far as Simeon and Levi, see okay. the thing why, like okay. you, you, like the brother Panda Hesse, he could probably give you some more historical fact, but I'm going to deal with some, some common sense and some history when we deal with that. Now, Levi, as I said, and as the scripture said, and you cannot deny this, was he not scattered among every tribe in Israel? Was he not? not the question. You're not well, I'm about to answer it. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just getting your view first, and then I'm about to answer your question. Who are they today? You're not about to ask me a yes or no question with something that needs explaining, so I'm asking you a no, no, question, you then I'm about to further explain. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Yeah, one at a time. Got it. Got a wall. Yo. Can I rebuttal on that? Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Let me let a wall reply first, and then, uh, you know, we're going to uh, go down the line. Got it. Got a wall. Right. Like I said. Okay, you said that's not who they are, and that's garbage, as you said. Fine. So if that's garbage, then you must have the actual account. Cause you, you, I just read who said this. It's not what Ariel said. I'm reading what the Spirit showed Jacob, what was going to happen in these latter days. So I need you to give me who they are today. Don't go around it. I want you to tell me exactly who they are and how did you come up with that map. If well, you don't take away, you one thing I will say is that Levi... Like I told you. No, I'm, I'm about to answer. You just not about to try to push that dummy doctrine on me. So, like I said, Simeon, like I said, Simeon and Levi, Simeon and Levi are scattered among every tribe, as the scripture states. Levi, according to Isaiah 11:11, 11, he is a part of the kingdom of Judah. He is in the four corners of the earth. When the slave master sold us, they didn't say, okay, oh, he didn't He didn't sift them out from every tribe. So, oh, yeah, Levi, yeah, we sending all you to, to Haiti. Uh, Simeon, we sending all you to Hispaniola. Man, you had Northern Kingdom Northern Kingdom clans around, among the Igbo tribe, and a lot of them was involved. Matter of fact, at least a third of them make up the transatlantic slave trade. And when you do any history on the Igbos, they claim all Northern Kingdom tribes. Even the Fulani, they claim lineage to Ephraim, you know, and, and it's and it's a lot of history back it up, far more history than you will ever find on a North American Indian saying that he's gay, or even a, a so-called Dominican saying he's gay. So, as far as who was leave out today, he is in the Americas. He's in the whole Western Hemisphere, but you cannot identify your tribes based on those interpolated scriptures in Genesis 49. In other words, you don't know. Okay, next person. Okay, All right. let me um, let me let me let me try to deal with this. Uh, this pain the head. I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to touch topic on that. Your boy Norse concerning that chart. 
All right, well, yeah, same. Uh, I just wanted to touch topic on behalf of the brother saying it was given to the Ruach HaKodesh, that chart, which I uh, completely, I completely disagree with concerning on first, I'm going to deal with uh, the sister question she asked earlier because I, I, I want to answer that. And then I'm going to get back to the brother concerning on who's who. So the sister question earlier concerning on how do we know where people is and et cetera, et cetera. If we go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Just deal with me. Because I'm going to go into the scripture to show her we can get I can we can give you the locations on where these people is. We can give yeah. you the location on where they are, but but for us to say for us to say that you're this person and you're that person and Judah is the blacks and you can't do that. But I, I'll show you exactly where these people is according to Acts chapter two verse four. So um and then I'm gonna get a precept to that. So Acts chapter two verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under Shammayim. Now when, now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak the aliens? And now hear every man in their own tongue, wherein we were born. Can, can someone of... Uh, Mute their phone while I'm I'm going over scripture. Uh, verse yeah, somebody, nine. Yeah, please, yeah, please mute, please mute if you uh, have some noise in the background. Please mute that. So verse nine, Parthians and Medes. Now we're going over into the to the scriptures, basically where the northern kingdom is today. This is today. This is where they are today. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia and Figria and in Pamphylia. In Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. So that, this right here gave us locations where the northern kingdom is. Now let's get a precept of that for future prophecy where the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom are going to be gathered from. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Yeah, we're going to get some more callers. All right, on, Isaiah guys. chapter 11. All right, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall set his hand again the second time, showing you future prophecy because he ain't came a second time, to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt, what we just read in Acts 2 and 4, and from Pephros, another where we read from there, and from Cush and, Ali, and Elam and Shinar and from Mama and from the islands of the sea, the northern kingdom. This is Now we're going into the southern kingdom. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Because Judah was the only people that was spread it to the four corners of the earth. Not all of the nations, only Judah. So that I just want to touch base on the sister question concerning on how do we know who's who. And also, there's nowhere in the scripture where it says that we're supposed to make a 12 tribe chart. There's nowhere in the scripture. That stuff just came up and, and they made that up. Now dealing now, with the, sword the, dealing with the yeah all right now swore the question on I, I, I not swore but I, I forgot his name but uh concerning yeah. on who's who nowhere in the scripture you can't just like you got brothers saying that uh, Judah's the American blacks you got brothers saying Levi is uh the the Haitians and 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 uh, uh and and the, and the Jamaicans and et cetera so according to the scriptures. How could any of us know who we are when Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were on them cargo slave ships together, spread it to the four corners of the earth? You don't know who you are. For you to say that I'm Judah or for you to say that I'm Benjamin or Levi, you are incorrect and you are a lie. You don't know. Because all three of these, these people were on the slave ships together. Unless you can dig back that far in history. But other than that, we don't know who we are. We just know that we Israel. So I just want to touch topic on where he want where where he was going, and I want to answer the sister question as well. 
Now, Water Swordsman, I uh, being that you're the only one uh, representing, you know, as far as one West Camp, so I'm gonna let you do a lot of talking, but uh, I'll let you reply to that as well. Again, if you out there, you represent the one West Camp, feel free to call in. You know that number. I see we have a lot of people on the switchboard though, uh, calling in via phone or via Skype. Just pressing number one if I can add you in the conversation. But a Water Swordsman, go ahead. Okay. Now, my question to you, right? When you read about these tribes, I already explained the 49th chapter in the first verse that it. He said what was going to befall them in the last days, so it gave us a generational path. Now, when you read like the, like Judah, they talk about the tribe of Judah, right? And it gives us traits, okay? Now, I'm asking you, according to the traits that's given about Judah, about the white tea, they like milk, and he dips his clothes in wine, who fit that trait on the planet Earth as known to be that can drink a lot of wine? Because... Christ, the Messiah, drunk wine, right? Tell you that in the scriptures, and he was of that tribe. <laughs> and you claim that he's a Negro, right or wrong? So, Absolutely. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So, so what I'm saying is these tribes are given their traits, so their, their, their genetic traits, so you can identify them in these last days because these traits never disappear through our generation. If you, if you, like for instance with Esau, right, they say he's a cunning hunter. Well, his offspring are doing those things today. This is how, that's one of the ways you can identify who Edomites are, because they'll be doing what their forefathers are doing. These things, traits do not disappear. You can ruffle records in genetics, I mean, uh, the genes and all that, the information about their genes and all that, but you can't disrupt genetic traits that's going to go through our generations. Whatever your father did, you inherit those traits. So the tribes, it gives the traits of these tribes. So you can't you telling me you can't identify with the traits of this tribe and these other brothers? I can see that. I mean maybe you can't see that, but I can see that. And that's how I identify who's who. I can look at this Bible, I read about Gad in uh Deuteronomy thirty third chapter and the traits with him cutting his own. I can picture it because I come I'm a Gadite. My family was on a reservation. They used to do those things. So I can identify with that. That's all I'm saying. I mean, if you feel that way, that's I can't make you feel the way you feel, but that's why I get my understanding. But Okay, so so when you when you when you stayed on uh Gad, mm-hmm. which is you guys claim to be the Native American Indians, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you speak on Gad, now, when we touch back in the uh uh in Genesis to Barashit, which means the beginning in the Hebrew, when we touch mm-hmm. back in Genesis and go through the uh uh the, through the story of, of Jacob and mm-hmm. uh the, the him him having kids, the twelve tribes, right? Mm-hmm. And you guys also teach that you are the seed of your father, right? Mm-hmm. Now, let's be humbled here. So it says we are the seed of your father. So if Jacob was a Negro and then he had sex with Negro women and all 12 tribes have to be Negro, right? Yeah, but when we read, remember they told you about the different souls that came out of him before he went to Egypt? You remember that? It talked about the different souls that came out of his life. You, you have to deal with precepts. I can deal right. with precepts to show you the folds, but like I'm saying, when when they come from, it, it, it doesn't matter where, wherever you go, you're gonna cut your own head off. Because even if mean? if if we if our if our men, Negro man, the tribes, any one of the tribes which are Negroes, had sex with another nation, that 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 baby still gonna come out a Negro, right? Right. Okay. So no matter no matter if they come out uh, a little a little light skinned than we are, they're still Negroes. So this is what I, the reason why I'm saying this to you is this: when you go into the twelve tribe chart, right. I can go into the twelve tribe chart and say Native American Indians. Yes, the, we have Negroes that was that were mixed in with the Native American Indians, the runaway slaves that ran into Indian territory and then had sex with them and came out Negroes, and we took on their customs. Yes, of course we have uh, uh, Negroes, but they're still Negroes. They just took on Native American customs. Then you have, I can say, um, who else y'all say, um, uh, Puerto Ricans. If we go into the map of Puerto Rico, there's Negroes in that land that went to that land from the slave trade. So, well, yes, we do have Negroes in Puerto Rico. Yeah. If you say Mexican, Mexico, right, you right. have, uh, got- all right, let me, let me finish real quick. You have uh, uh-huh. Lina La Vida Loca. You have them Mexicans with these uh, uh, spiky hair and all this stuff. Are these people Israel, or is there black Mexicans, Negroes in that land that's Israel? See, brothers have to make themselves more clear. 
Because we're once again, we come from Negroes. Whether if a Negro has sex with a Mexican, you are the seed of your father. So it's still Negro. Right. And what, what we see said. today out here, what what we see today out here on the fit on in the streets, we see Spaniard babies. So go ahead, brother. Get the floor. Right. I got what you're saying, right? But like for instance, you remember the story of Jacob and Esau. I got to use this example, okay? They both come from the same father and mother, don't they? But what did it tell you? It said two nations in your womb. So you got to remember, we're dealing with Genesis, and we're dealing with the beginning of nations here, something totally different than a regular what me and you do. This is coming from the most high, highly spiritual. This is the beginning of birth of nations. So when you read about Jacob and Esau, they were brothers, and they were both brothers, but they had, they had the same mother and father, but they were two spirits, two different nations, okay? So when them tribes came down, even though they had the same mother and father, they were different spirits that came out of it that became a nation of people. A different, and that's why I said that. And that's why when you go to the point in that chapter, it distinguished the difference in diversities in the spirit of these tribes. That's what I was saying, okay? That's what I mean by that. That's what you're missing. you got to understand that aspect of the scriptures. And now we're going to go down the panel because we have a lot of people standing by. But uh, Water Swordsman, you said so you had some other brothers, man, that uh, wanted to join the panel, man. If you could, contact the brothers because, you know, we like to hear both sides, you know what I mean? So if you could okay. contact them brothers, are they still available? Or did you speak yeah, to them brothers yeah. earlier? One just called up. He's on 718, that 718 number. He, 718. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if he's on. Hold on one second. Is it, uh, yeah, I got to go down the switchboard. If you have 718 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna open up the phone line. But um, seven. Hold up. Seven seven zero. You there? Seven yeah, seven zero. Yeah, him too. Yeah, you wanna chime in? I know you've been kind of quiet for a little while. You can chime in real quick. Hey. Right. Talking about me at all? Yeah. Him. Yeah. Seven yeah. seven zero. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm 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 I'm, I'm uh, I came to one with uh, brother from one with. Um, I'm from the Highlands originally, and um, 1989. You see, I hear what these brothers have to say, but. Sometimes you, 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 you hear um, certain knowledge of certain place. So one day I was going down um, 34th Street in um, New York, and I hear these brothers on the corner. But I have some certain knowledge about black history. But um, I thought we were, uh, I hear, uh, when we have, I'm from Jamaica, I hear uh, they teach on the street. I hear people in Jamaica that say that we're Israelite, the rest of the parents that we're Israelite, Christ was black. So I hear these brothers on the street corner, uh, 1989, and and then what they were saying interesting, and it caught my ears. I was there for four hours listening to them, and uh, when I did, I went and do my personal in-depth research, and I find out a lot of stuff what they were saying is true, right? So one West, uh, I learned a lot of things from one West, because what I'm saying that they were the only one that was out there on the street teaching, right? Because the knowledge that they were dropping, I, I didn't know, know where else to go because I just came to America. So I hear these brothers in the street dropping these knowledge that the Israelites are black, Christ is a black, uh, who the white man is, and blah, blah, blah. And there's certain things that were teaching I didn't hear before. So I went and do my personal research. You see, a lot of brothers hear other brothers teaching, and they just run, run with it. They don't go and do a personal research. I went and do my personal research, and a lot of stuff what they teach was true. And a lot of stuff, you know what I mean, uh, it wasn't correct. I'll be honest, because I'm a brother, I'm about honesty, right? And there are certain things that they teach was not true, all right? So I wouldn't, like some brothers say, like they want to tear down one West. I wouldn't say them brothers there go out there deliberately to spread lies. Because the Bible say, I hear brothers say they're prophets. I wouldn't use the term prophet. I would say I have the gift of prophets, of, uh, gift of prophecy, or I'm a disciple of Christ. So a brother going out there and saying they're prophets, you, you put yourself out there. So why am I a lot of these brothers go out there and do that? And a lot of stuff what they're teaching, the way they uh, approach a teaching uh, and the way they talk to people, it's wrong. It's wrong. But there's a lot of good things that come out of one way. So I'm one of the good brothers. A war is one of the good brothers, a war in line. And you have Gamma just calling. So you have a lot of good brothers that come from one way. You know what I mean? And a lot of brothers do their own personal study. And now uh, I find out there's certain things that they're teaching was, was off, was off. But a lot of other stuff, was, 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 it, was, it was correct. So I'm saying that um, I hear a lot of brothers putting on one way, say one way is this and one way is that. And like uh, you have Tar and Yohana. I know Yohana personal. You know what I mean? And uh, certain things that he's saying I don't agree with. 
And there are certain things that Nate is saying and Joe is saying I don't agree with, right? But you have a lot of good brothers that came out of one West, and you have a lot of negative brothers that came out of one West. And a lot of brothers, they are they're teaching, they're, they're teaching a lot of negative stuff. And the way how they deal with people and approach people, it's wrong. So you have brother uh, on here saying they're trying to tear down one West, what one West teaching. But there's a lot of good teaching that came out of one West because 1989, I never see some of these brothers out there teaching. You know what I mean? I never see certain brothers out there teaching on the street. The only brothers I see out there teaching on the street was these brothers from one West. So I have to give them credit in certain things that they enlighten me to because I can go in the Bible now and I know to break down the scripture and understand what's going on in the world, understand why are people in this situation and how are we going to get get out of this situation. But there's a lot of things these brothers doing is wrong. Man. So God said it beautifully. I mean, that's all I have to say, though. Yeah, let's go to the other people on the panel. Um, 713, 713. Uh, did you want to say? 713, 482. You live there. Hello? Yeah, and if you have, yeah, anything you want to uh, add in? Anything, did you, uh, anything you want to chime into? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what I hear is uh, a lot of you know saying that uh, you know one West isn't totally off you know some good brothers and I'm not denying that but you have to look at the fruit of what they're saying if you are saying speaking lies even with a humble heart it's still a lie true, and true, true. with the chart and with everything that they've brought out cannot be validated with the Bible. They have to go outside the Bible to validate what they teach. The chart, the Genesis 49 chapter, all of that can be debunked within the Old Testament. And that, that's that's what I find laughable after going back and reading through the prophecies. Like when you read Second Chronicles, Hezekiah invites Northern Kingdom Israelites to the Passover. <laughs> and, they, they, and this is less than 100 years when the Northern Kingdom was allegedly removed from Israel. So and then you go to New Testament, and even in the second chapter, third chapter, when the Messiah was born, you had a lady in the in the in the temple from the tribe of Asher. What the heck is she doing there? Everything they they put out doesn't add up to the Bible, and that's the problem. We're trying to get to the root of everything. They did what they're teaching is not accurate. Uh, what uh, these brothers keep on holding on to these false prophecies: Ephraim is a cake not turned; uh, Zebulun shall d- uh, dwell by the seashore. Uh, all of these things, they, they don't add up to what the Bible is actually saying. And so can I ask you a question, down, brother? Go ahead. Um, so what you teaching, you teaching 100% truth, right? That's what you're saying, right? As far as, far as I know, yes, sir. <laughs> you teaching 100%, everything what you're teaching is 100% truth, right? I can I can back everything up just, just from within the Bible. I don't have to go to... Lost tribes and promised lands and so, other but you know, to prove but you know, but you know, um, the trans, but you know, the the Bible that we read, right? The uh, the New English Translation Bible. You know, the, the white man put certain words in there to mislead people, right? You know that, right? As far as far as what? For example, he says, you know, he says in the New Testament, and there's certain words in there that you know that the word Lord, like the word God, you know, he put that in there. Oh so, yeah, one hundred percent. Those are those are all. That's just semantics, right there. I'm talking about the meat of what the Bible is saying. That's what's <laughs> throwing everybody off. Yeah, but can I say something? I'm going to say something. You, you believe in the Christ, right? The Messiah, right? 100%. 100%. Okay, okay, right? So when Christ was walking the earth uh, 2,000 years ago, right, all those people know that they were Israel, Israelites. All of them know that they were Israelites. Christ himself had to pick 12 men and retrain them. There's a reason why he picked 12 men and retrained them, right? Mm-hmm. What I see, I'm going to tell you what I see. I see... Brother is going down teaching that we're Israelites. But the Messiah, mm-hmm. he's going to choose. That's why scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. He's going to choose the brother that you want to choose. Just like back there, then he chose 12 men out of all them guys know that they're Israelites and retrain them for three years. So there's brothers out there, whether they're teaching certain things off or you teaching 100% truth. There's brothers. Mm-hmm. What, what Christ is looking at is sincerity. What the motive. Is a motive, right? Yeah. And, and so, as yeah, I brother, stated earlier, they might be teaching ahead. certain things that's off, but it's the motive that God looking at, you know, the motive, you know, motive behind it and keeping his commandment. So what I'm saying, Christ, the Messiah, he's going to choose the brother you want to choose. So don't care what if a brother teaching that and a brother teaching this and this, you have 100% truth, that don't mean nothing. 
That don't mean uh-huh. nothing if you have 100 truth. It's keeping God. He said, "Hereby you know that you know that you are, you know Him if you keep His commandments." That's the old duty of man. And that that's a totally different monster because there are commandments that they're not keeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. And, you and, and, you, and, you, you not keep okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay, brother, let me let me let me ask you this. Do you understand mm-hmm. the difference between the law of Moses and the law of God? Now what? Do you understand the difference between the law of Moses and the law of God? The law of Moses and the law of God. The law of Moses is the law of God. Well, when you listen to what the Messiah said, he's teaching, he's showing what the Most High is really thinking about. And a lot of those commandments that was given by Moses, he tells like you what? that Moses For example, gave for you example that what? For example, like what? example, for divorce. Divorce is a good example. He, t- he tells you in, in the Beatitudes, any man that divorces his wife and calls her to marry, uh, and she goes to marry another, she commits adultery. Yeah. And then when you mm-hmm. go to the law of Moses, it says, you know, if you don't fly in the presence of your wife, divorce her. So no, right, right, but, but that, that don't, yeah, but what I'm saying is, is, is the way a man was thinking there. It's not, he ain't got nothing to do with the law of Moses or the Most High. The law of Moses is the law of the Most High. Moses didn't write no law. It was God that wrote the law that he gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. If that's the case, then why did the Messiah say that in Matthew 5? He said about, Moses can I, say, gave, can, I, can I say something on about, that? Yeah. Let me read this. This is Second uh, Peter 2 and 7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding of all things. Uh-huh. What you what you gotta understand is evolution with Israel, okay? It tell you because they brought that topic up of divorce, okay? Well, why did Moses remember they brought it up? But he said for mm-hmm. the hardness of their heart, he gave them that. But he said in the beginning it was not so because in the beginning there was no divorce. When you and he reiterated that, um, Christ the Messiah reiterated that back that there's no divorce truly, okay? When you with a woman, you with her to death do you part. They just did that mm-hmm. in the hardness of their heart. So he came back and he wasn't talking nothing different from the laws of Moses. He just brought a higher understanding that people thought it was different. No, yeah. he just it was an evolution to really what the father wanted. <clears throat> we were the evolution. We were yeah. coming out of Egypt. We were being built up as a nation. So there was things that had to be put in place temporarily, and it's going to evolve. We in the evolvement period, and 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 the Messiah brought the pure, pure, unadulterated understanding on where the projection was going to go for what the Father wanted and was wanted and required yeah. from us as a people. Right. And I want to just add something to what the brother said. Brother, you can have 100% truth. That don't mean that you're going to make it because one of the main criteria to make it in the kingdom, the Bible tells you how you're going to get in the kingdom. The Bible tells you who's not going to get in. The Bible says, mm-hmm. blessed is he that keep the commandment of God, so that can, they can enter into the city, New Jerusalem, right? So not because Correct. we have a hundred percent truth, that don't mean that don't mean nothing to God, because you All can right. have hundred percent truth. Can I, can I weigh in on what the brother just said? Finish what I'm saying. You can have hundred yeah. percent truth, but are well, you applying it in your life? The truth in your life? You don't know. You don't yeah, know you're going to make it. And, the, and that's, you, the, that's, you that's the thing, though. I'm going to make and it. And that's the thing. That, that, these are the principles that a lot of these camps aren't teaching about how to make it in the kingdom. They're too focused on other prophecies. And who yeah, this, I understand what you're saying, brother. I can, I can go so with I, that. I, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is the fact that we need to get back to the pureness or what the Bible calls pure religion or pure worship of the Most High. Yeah, I understand and what you're saying. I, before I think we that's, do that, before okay. we do that, we have to remove yeah, all, all of this nonsense yeah. within the nation. Yeah, I understand. So yeah, we have to start with these, with these false doctrines. Go ahead, Sal. I'm, I'm, I'm a... Yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me let our brother Shala chime in. I know he wanted to get in. Go ahead, brother Shala. I just want to... Okay, okay. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to uh chime in. Thanks for letting me in, Sal. Um, one thing it seemed like the brother's doing, I really didn't catch his name, uh, but he's oh. making excuses, you know? He's like, Oh, well, as long as you keep the commandments but guess what, sir? There's a commandment called uh bearing false witness. So if they out there lying on the scriptures, uh, uh misinterpreting scriptures, then you know, that's that's going against the commandments. So you can't use that as an excuse no more. So, but what I wanted to um I wanted to shift gears a little bit, mm-hmm. get a few precepts. Um I'm gonna start off in Proverbs because the one of the main things like um I'm gonna back up a little bit of what Awar said. He said earlier that um the reason why uh Israel got a bad rep basically is because certain groups took over early on the on the internet. So when you look up you Google Hebrew Israelite you know, like you, you tell a random person, oh, you're a Hebrew Israelite, they go home and Google it, certain people are going to pop up. 
So I feel what you're saying, and that's where most of the negativity from. That's how. True, true, true. That's where a lot of that power comes through of it being, um, uh, bad for the people, you know. So okay. the hatred is the main thing that that is that's messing everything up. The the hate doctrine, they like the, the scriptures don't say you're supposed to hate everybody. Let's go into a couple of those. Let's go to Proverbs 16 and 17. Proverbs 16 and 17. Proverbs 16 and 7. It says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now, have you ever seen any of those camps read that precept or, or carry out that precept? It's all about hating. Hate the white man. Hate, uh, uh, hate the, the African. Hate everybody. I, I even seen the other day. I was watching one of them videos with Polite and GMS, and uh, GMS, and, and, and they said one minute they saying how they hate Africans, right? But then he's saying, oh, well, the Igbos is Israelites, and oh, the Nigerians is Israelites. But you hate you, but you hating these Africans though. You not you not making a separation, saying that look, some of our people is in Africa, man. We we messed up on that chart. He's saying they Israelites, but then he's standing next to the chart. That's just one example, but you know, going into the hate thing. Let's go to another precept. Let's go to Proverbs. Can I, can I say something quick? Can I say Proverbs, something quick, let, me get, let me get a couple precepts. I just want to say something. I ain't really getting no time. Uh, Proverbs 25 and 21. 25, and we're going to go to 21. It says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Now, who's carrying this spirit? Which, which camp is carrying that spirit? That's what I want to know. Because all I see is hatred. I don't know. I don't really watch camps anymore. I don't know what's going on now. But at the end of the day, like, it's not that we need to get rid of camps as a whole, but we need to we need to restructure these camps into the new into the new militia into the new into the new understanding. I agree. They did. They set. They set. They set a great. They did a great job, man. You know, the camps they did a great job, but now that the, the time is over, now we got to go to a new phase. If we I all get on one accord, could you imagine how, how powerful Israel will be? If we all yeah. got on one accord and were speaking truth and got rid of the hatred, got rid of the negativity, I mean, this, it don't have to be like this, you know? And then like the brothers were saying with the egos, you know, and all of that. Yeah. And um, yeah. so basically I'm, I'm going to pass it off because I know the brother has something to say. Yeah, I just want to say something quick, brother. I, I told you to agree with you, right? And um, the, the, the Bible don't say to hate the white man or anything. The Bible say you hate evil. God hates the white man, because he's evil, God hates African or the, the, the hold evil. Up. What scriptures God, say? To, hold up. What scriptures say God hates the white man? Let's go to that. No, let me finish. Right right let me finish. Let me finish. Let me see. The scriptures say I'm going to I'm gonna quote the scriptures. You, you, no, hold up. But you said the scriptures say God God hates let, the white let, man. Let me, let me please me show me let that say, scripture. Brother, allow me to say it. Yeah, one at a time. One at a time. Right. We want to hear the answer to that. We want to hear the answer to that one. Got Genesis 25 and 21. He said two manner. When you try the word manner, it say a lifestyle. It's a custom and culture, right? When you read Malachi, say God say he called it a border of wickedness. The reason why he say Esau because God foresee in the future that Esau was gonna be wicked. That's why he say he hate Esau. No, hold God up. see everything before it happened. God see everything before it happened. He say we way okay. down the line uh, that Esau gotta, was gonna be evil. Can I ask, evil. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Backing up with, for about what you just said. Yeah. All right. So you said uh, Genesis twenty five. And what was it, 21? When they say manner, check up the word manner. Oh, two different you know manner of people. Means? Okay, now, let me ask you a question. Are Israelites and Hamites two different manner of people? Israelites and Hamites, two different manner of people? Yeah. Just, just answer the yeah, question. Yeah, in the sense, in the, in the sense. In, no, in the, no, it's no. a simple question. Are, are, are they the same? The two different no, manner of people, not, right? No, God said put a difference between the Egyptian and the Israelites. All right, exactly. So, does that automatically mean they have two different skin colors? No, no, I didn't say it. Listen, listen to what I'm saying, brother. I said, but you're manna. saying Esau is the no, white no, man. No, 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 this, this is what I'm saying. Listen, people, I'm talking about manner. Right? I'm not talking about yeah, I'm talking about the, the word manner right now. You got, you got I'm talking it. about the word manner. It say two manner of people. When you up the word manner, it say custom and lifestyle. It was going to have two separate lifestyles. That's what the word manner means. Okay, so that's where you get that Esau is the white man from that? That's what I really wanted to know. No, no, I didn't say I didn't say Esau is a white man. I say Esau is a red man. White people is not white; they're red. 
I didn't oh, say white you, said, man. you just you already oh, said you saw the white man. You already Brother, said. can I say something? Can I say can I can I explain to you? <laughs> they use the term white because they want to associate with purity. White people is I use the term white because that's what they use today. I use the term black, that's what they use. I'm not black. I'm all right, brown. All right, yeah, you're getting off the topic though. You said that you, you said that two different manner of people, two different customs, and I'm I'm telling you, does that mean that these they had two different skin colors? Is that can we can we make no, that, can no, we no, say no. that to make it automatically draw? Well that that, that wasn't the that, that wasn't the question. The question about it was about evil. I'm saying the word manner there mean that because I have two different lifestyles. I wasn't talking about no color. You okay. always want to bring okay. color. I, You're trying to sip, sip it color. All right. Can I touch? Can I? Can I? Uh, can I touch the topic on this east side real quick? Since brothers is going on east side, it's your boy yeah, Nancy. Real quick. Um. Yeah, um. Since we touching topic on uh east side, why don't we deal with the beginning? Go to the beginning on east side. I heard a brother earlier talk about he was red, and that's the so called white man. But let's deal, let me go to a scripture real quick in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And Yahuwah, thy power for man of the dust of the ground. Now, right here, we know that the dust of the ground is different shades of brown, brownish red. Mm-hmm. The soil gets brownish red. So now, let's go to Genesis 25 and 25. Because brothers don't have an understanding on this scripture. Can I ask you a question, brother? What color was Hold that? Hold on, brother. Let me finish my precept. I dealt with you before. You always cutting brothers yeah. off. Let me deal with my I'm precept. I'm asking you what color was Jeff? Yeah, hold on, hold on. I'll answer your question after I'm done. I want to be, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to deal with you. I deal with you already and you get cut, brother. Hold on. I don't want to deal with that. You get cut. So now, no, I know you don't want to deal with it. I know you don't want to deal with it. You get cut already, brother. There's no way around it. I don't want to deal with you. So Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now, when we continue to read this scripture, the only difference about Esau was his hair. That's the what only color difference. What color Hold on, let me what finish. Color let me finish. Me. Now, let me Answer finish. Me. Now, when this word red is in Genesis 25, this does not refer to a characteristic of color. I know it this exactly refers this, but this rather mainly refers to the soil or the dust of the earth from which the original man was created. And the okay, original man question, that was brother. created. Hold on, let me finish. Question. Let me finish. And the original man that was created from the dust of the ground was Adam. And in the Hebrew of Adam is Adawam. And what does Adawam mean? Red. So when you have a with red, you're saying Adam was red. Adam was white. Hold on. What color was Hold on. Hold on. Everybody got to get a term, man. One at a time. People listening to the show. Take oh, hey, man. Yeah, I want to respond to that, too. Yeah, 770. Got it. 770, you can reply, brother. Hey, brother, um, the host, can I ask the man a question? Can I ask the man a question? You can. You got to wait until he's done. Yeah, yeah, but okay. I deal with this brother already, and the brother answered my question. Can I ask him a question and answer my question directly? You can, you can answer, go ahead. Okay, brother, can I ask you a question? The brother teach that, right, that Noah is black, Ham is black, and Shem is black. So I ask him, because he claimed his doctrine is the white man came from Jephthah. So I asked him what color Jephthah was, and the brother don't want to answer. You can't prove that noise, black. You can't I prove never, that noise, black. I never, I never, I never, I never said I couldn't answer your question. Question: What color was Shem? Uh, Jephthah. Jephthah. What color was Shem? We Jephet? all, we all know. We we all know we all know that uh, Japheth was was uh, black, but we can't we okay, can't show that in the okay, scripture. Okay, 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 okay. We can't show so, that in the scripture. Just like black, you can't right, show so, me, just like you can't show me in the scripture that you can't show me in the scripture concerning what you what you guys teach. No, 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 no. You teach that Noah is black, Shem, Am, Shem, and Jephet is black. That's what you teach. You said Esau, the white man, you say the white man came from Jephet. Show me the white man came from Jephet, because how did he turn, well, how was Jephet black, and then he turned white? Explain it to me. It's not in the scripture. But how did Jephet turn white? How did they get hey, white? Hey, brother, how brother you, you get... said earlier, this is, how, this is how you contradict yourself. You no, said earlier out of your own mouth that the white man tampered with the Bible, took stuff out of the Bible, and et cetera, no, 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 et cetera. No, no, no. And now you, you have a nerve to ask me black. this question. I asked you when they return white. You say white man I answered your Japanese. question. I answered, yeah, white people do come from Japanese. Something so, so happened during the question. time. Okay. So one at a time. All right. Can I can I address him on the Japanese thing? No, I want to ask brother a question. The brother right. The Jephet was black, right? So, at what point did Jephet turn white? The descendant of Jephet turn white? 
I, I, can you I address, can't answer can it. You can't go according to the scripture. It happened during time. I answered no, your question. No, but you said, no, but give me a precept. You're always talking about precept. Give me a precept, brother. Oh, give me a precept. my goodness, man. This, this is vain. Dealing with proud brothers, man. This is what the brothers said. This is what the brothers said. You said there's another brother here that's representing one West Camps. Hold on. Let's go to 718216. And I'm going to go to you after that. 718216. You're live in there. Yeah, this is Gama. I was trying to get in. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear, brother. Anything you All want right. to say? That? Um, a lot of things. Um, the Jasset issue. Um, Noah, Genesis 10th chapter, is a father. Um, Shem, Ham, and Jasset are brothers. Um, they all come in on the gene pool of um, of Noah. How can how can Jasset become a Caucasian? That I don't understand. And the twelve tribes sign. Um, all of them being Negroes, I agree with the brother on that note. The other brother was talking about the Spaniards, what they call mestizo. Yeah, that's correct. But when you look at the twelve tribes, they were scattered north, south, east, and west. There was only three tribes that came out the west coast of Africa. So where were, the, where were the rest of the other brothers scattered at, so forth, and so forth, and so on? It's like that book I got called the Iroquois, and you can't, the scripture says, small or great, be not ignorant of any matter. So uh, other sources that connect with the scriptures, because you can't read the Bible on the surface level. you got to deal with archaeology, anthropology, and history, too, because the Bible is a history book. And you can, you can cross-reference archaeology and um, historical data, of past historians that told the truth, tell the truth with the scriptures, like what they call the Native American Indian. That's just a false title. Ain't no such thing as Native American Indian, uh, Puerto Ricans, Jamaican, Haitian. Those are false bywords and proverbs. When you look at the so-called Native American Indian culture before he was conquered, like the Iroquois, they were saying the Our Father prayer. They were wearing the Hebrew turbans. They hold customs. This is for the white man came before he was conquered. It's a Middle East custom. When you look at the chant, ha ya ha wa, those are Hebrew alphabets. This is nothing that they learned from the white man. When you look at the traits and the attributes, and I'm using them as one example, okay, because I've been on some of these powwows. We're not talking about the ones that look like John Wayne, okay, or what they showed us, or the mestizos or the Spaniards. We're talking about the ones that Deuteronomy 2864 said how the most high was going to scatter the 12 tribes, north, south, east, and west. Um, I just wanted to touch on that. And you can cross-reference this information with uh, different historians, archaeology, and cross-reference with the Bible. They're just speaking a a tongue that was imposed on them, like Puerto Rican and Spanish and Haiti. I agree with the brother. The brother said the tribes are mixed among each other, okay, because the Seminole went down to Bahamas, okay, that was down there fighting against the military of the U.S. down there in Pensacola, Florida. But to say that the natives and uh, what they call Puerto Rican just mean rich fort when they conquer the area, people are coming from the Middle East before they even migrated in these lands. Some of them were sold on the west coast of Africa. Some of them came over here before with Second Ezra, the 13th chapter speaks about. I'm going to end on that note. All right, Brother Shalom, I'm going to bring you in. But uh, so far we got three brothers representing one west camps and everybody else. You know, I guess on a destructive aspect of it. So we're gonna go down the line. I see we got, I see we got the callers. We'll get to the callers as well. Again, the number is six four six seven one six seven three two zero. Wanna hear from you guys, see what you guys gotta say, what you think about the show so far, one West Camp, destructive or productive. Share your opinions live in the air. Go to bad brother Shala. You can reply. Oh yeah, I wanted to reply to, uh, a couple of things the brother said. Uh, first he said that uh because Noah was black that automatically means that Shem, Ham, and Japheth was black. But that's not necessarily true. That's, you know, this is the reason why we, you know, we appreciate what the brothers, the, the elders put in that work, you know, to um, get this thing out here. But, you know, now and they gave us a, a foundation to build off. You know, we we not just we don't just take and throw everything away. We we got the information they, they gave us, and then we, we went deeper into it. So now it's a new age of this thing. But anyways, um, I don't know. I know most one West brothers don't go into the Book of Enoch, but the Book of Enoch tells us that Noah was albino. So <laughs> it's, it's completely, it's completely, 
it's completely uh, possible that he passed that albino gene down to Jaffet. Now, we got more information on that. The Hebrew well, first word. First of all, hold uh, on. The, Can I interject on that? Uh, well, hold up. Let me finish. Let him finish. Let him finish, brother. Let him finish. Let him finish. We have a lot of people on the panel. We have a lot of people on the panel. Go ahead. You can finish up, brother Shalom. All right. So I just got a few references. I'm going to make it quick. A few references <laughs> uh, about the, the name uh, Japheth or Yepheth, right? Um, the the root word people th- say is pathal means to be open, but actually the true root word or the etymology of the word Japheth is yafa, which is the Hebrew um, word H three three zero two, meaning to be beautiful, fair, or white. I got some references real quick. I'm gonna go into the um, International Standard Bible uh, Encyclopedia, and I'm gonna skip down a little bit under Japheth. It says. Um, Let's see, this, uh, okay, yeah, right here. It says the root word uh, for uh, Japheth is patha, to make wide. This etymology, however, is not universally accepted as the wordplay is so obvious. And the association of Japheth with Shem, Dark, and Ham, Black, suggests that a name on similar lines, either gentilic or descriptive of race. Japheth has been therefore been explained as meaning fair from Yafa, the non sem non hermetic races known to the Jews being more or less white skinned. Let me get one more. Uh this Absolutely. is um this is uh, uh the Eastern Standard uh, the, the Eastern Bible Dictionary, Japheth. Uh widespreading, God enlarged Japheth, uh, Hebrew Yafa, Elohim Yafet, Genesis nine and twenty seven. Some however derive the name from Yafa to be beautiful, hence white. So I got more. I got a bunch of more uh, uh, references to back that up. Now I want to ask you: Do you have any references or any kind of uh, art, uh, historical proof, anything that could say that uh, uh, Japheth was black? Because I mean, you can use deductive reasoning and say, okay, yeah, it was Shem, uh, Ham. They uh, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth was all black because no one was black. But okay. no scriptures say that. So what proof? Okay. Do you have? Okay. Let's let's trace the bloodline. All right. Let's go beyond Noah. Okay, Lamech. Lamech is the father of Noah. Then you go, it, it leads you right back, Genesis, the fifth chapter, Methuselah. And Methuselah is the son of Enoch. Okay, Jared is the father, Genesis 5, 18. Jared is the father of Enoch. Yes, I read the book of Enoch. There's bones in some of those Enoch books. It's like they're putting out a lot of falsified New Age information to throw people off. It goes all the way back to Seth's bloodline. It leads you right back to Adam bloodline. Okay. okay. When you trace the when you trace the so long, and when you trace the family tree, when you trace the family tree, it's going to take you back to Adam. Adam was not no white boy. Noah is coming out of Adam's black. He's coming out of Noah is coming out of Adam's bloodline. All that. Okay. That, uh, okay. I, I understand what you're saying. That and I totally agree. He, he goes all the way back to Adam. But what do that have to do with him being an albino? You have to forget. Well, that's false uh, information. Albino can have two. Uh, uh, well, that's, that's false. That's, that they, they got well, a lot. That's, I got that's your opinion. That's, that's your opinion. Hold on, y'all. 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 Where they're putting this falsified information out there, just like people still think the people that are in Palestine is the real Jews. Think they, they come from the fourth son of Jacob, okay, with all this New Age stuff. That's why Christ said, take heed that no man deceive you. All this deception, when you trace the family tree, what they put in that Enoch book, that's a false version. There's distorted versions of Enoch out there, just like they got the New King, King James Version, distorted, the New Age Version. They got a lot of distorted, falsified information out there to mislead people and to keep people. These are stumbling blocks that Christ told us to look out for. It don't make no common logical sense if Noah is coming out the same family tree, okay, of Adam. All right, I got to bring so, some more people in. Uh, sorry about that, Brother Child. I got a, like eight lines right, open right there. Right, and I, that's some people right. I didn't even get to. Um, 832, your, your line is open, man. I apologize. I know I had you on for a little while. 832292, you hear me? You hear me? Uh, Black Jesus Minister, how y'all doing? Hey, what's going on, man? Anything you want to say, brother? Yes, indeed. Let me help you, brothers, out. And let me say, first of all, to all the brothers who agreed that, that there is false doctrine 
among the Hebrew Israelites because there's false doctrine in any man, anything that man is involved in. In Christianity, Hebrew Israelites, Israelites, I, you know, every religion got some, some errors and some false and some false doctrine in it. And it is true men and women of God who are bold enough to to, who, to say to question false doctrine and to and to have and to have the guts to want to change it so that we can move on to perfection. I, I, I salute you, brothers, that are doing that. And that and that twelve that twelve tribe chart is 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 absolutely bogus. It's absolutely uh, 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 shameful that black people you know, could identify with that type of, uh, of buffoonery. Uh, Adam, Adam and Eve, uh, when it talks about the, when it talks about the redness, it's not talking about Adam and Eve's skin color. It's talking about the inside. All of your insides are red. Your blood is red. Your organs are red. That is what makes us all human. So up under all of our skin color, we all have red blood and red organs. Now, Adam and Eve's skin color, okay, and the richest soil on the planet is black. Adam and Eve were black, and that's backed up by science over and over again, by uh, uh, genetics and also uh, 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 by anthropology. The oldest human remains are in Africa. Look at the, uh, the, 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 doc, the genetic documentary called The Journey of Man. All of man uh, uh, comes, comes from Africa, black African people. As black people, we are the mothers and fathers of all humanity. Africans have the, have the most diverse gene pool. All other colors and races come from black. Black is the mother and father of all color. Black is the mother and father of all races. So Adam had to be black because if he was red, then there would be no black people. Everybody would be red in some other lighter color, okay? So we need, we need, y'all need, we need to cut that dumbness out. Okay, Adam was black, Eve was black because she came out of his flesh. Uh, all humanity comes from blackness. Now Noah, so uh, 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 and 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 albino children coming from black people is a, is a proof that you can that white people can come out of black. Okay, uh, uh, Japhet, uh, Noah's three sons uh, 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 were were three different colors and three different nations of people. Look at the book by Dr. Dwight McKissick, uh, Blacks in the Bible. Their, their names were indicative of their skin color. He named them after their skin color, like one of the brothers was saying. Japhet means fair skin. Look it up, fair skin. And, and Sham means olive, dusky, or, 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 or brown. And Ham means black skin, and not just jet black, from jet black to brown. When you look at Africans, all Africans are not jet black. You have jet black to brown Africans. You even have red Africans. <clears throat> so we need to stop all this dumbness about talking about uh, uh, Adam and Eve was red, and then and then and then all Ham, Sham, and Japhet were black. That is ignorance, brothers. Cut that mess out. Be bold enough to stand up for truth and stop and stop carrying on ignorance from our uh, 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 elders and brothers and people who who may have made mistakes. And that doesn't that doesn't make them evil. Let's honor them, but let's understand that they that people can make mistakes, and let's not keep carrying on dumbness, and let's grow on to perfection. Okay, and again, I, I salute you, brothers, for uh, for for standing up for uh, righteousness and standing up for for being frank and, and and telling the truth that hey, there are things that they're wrong. We need to stand up to it. The scripture says the scripture is for correction, the scripture is for reproof, the scripture is so that the so that the men and women and God. Can uh, uh, can rightly divide the word of truth, okay? And uh, and and to that other brother who was saying that you know you can have all truth and and that and that's not enough, brother. You you I'm, the brother corrected you on that, brother. Please don't say that again, brother. You know if you have all truth, brother, you good. But ain't nobody got all truth. So we're right. maturing and growing every day. All right, seven seven zero. You can reply to that briefly because we got some more callers. Go ahead. You can reply to that. Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I want to say something quick. Uh, the brother was saying about the way that he come across. Yeah. Did he say shit? Oh, who that? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't yeah. hear him. Yeah, somebody sound like a robot right quick. Oh, man. What car seven, 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 seven. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I think that's 770. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. Uh, do me a favor. Let's call right back, man. It's press number one. I don't know. Something with the phone line. I don't know what's going on. 
But um, anybody else want to chime in? The water sportsman, you want to chime in? You want to reply to that? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just want to uh, I want to say something about Esau with the red. You know, when you when you go into Esau, there's, there's prophecy. Okay, when you go into Revelation, uh, who's that? <laughs> when you go into Revelation, it talk about when you go to the sixth chapter, it talk about these seals that Christ opened because the book was sealed. Remember that. When you read about the fourth chapter, talk about this red horse. That red horse is talking about the Edomite dynasty. Because when you go in the apocalypse, it said Esau is the end of the world. A lot of these guys, when you listen to them talk, they play upon what happened in the past. But Esau's line extends to the end time. Okay, Christ had the prophecy. He talked about a great sword that Edom was going to get. Okay, which is talking about what? The nuclear weapons. That's that great sword. Okay, because when you see the word great, it's always talking about something that evolved to something bigger than what it was. Because when you read Genesis twenty-seven forty, it tells you that the prophecy on Edom was he was going to get the sport in the dominion of the earth. When you go into Revelation 6, it tells you that he was going to get a great sport, okay, and destroy the earth. So you can't put that with uh, uh, Japheth. There's no prophecy saying that Japheth was going to get the dominion of the earth or the sport. The only ones that fulfilled that prophecy of Edom were the so-called white people. You can't argue that. Just look around and see. They created the bomb. They run with the bomb. They, this is why the United Nations is in America, and uh, the United Nations is not in Japan. Everybody got to come to America. Why? Because the so-called European, which is the biblical Edomite, are running the planet because they have the bomb. That's all I want to say. I want to add to that, too. Yeah, yeah. Who's who's <laughs> was that Nazi? Nah, yeah, let me, what he said. let me rebuttal what he said. Let me rebuttal what he said concerning on Dominion. Now, now when you go to the book of Genesis, Gen- yeah, yeah. all right, no doubt. Now, in the book of Genesis, it speaks about uh, Adam having dominion over the fish of the sea and over the over 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 basically the whole world. When you go to Dominion in Hebrew, that Dominion in Hebrew, that talks about Adam having dominion over the whole world. Then when you go to the dominion of Esau, that's not talking about dominion of the whole earth, the whole earth, the whole world. That's where brothers lack understanding that. Brothers must go into these words and research these words to get understanding. Those are two totally different dominions. So when Esau having dominion, that was talking about his land area, his land mass where he's at today. So let me give you one scripture and then I'm going to pass it off. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pass it off. But let me get one scripture. One scripture concerning on uh, on on Esau, uh, basically, that the brother's gonna have to um, he gonna have to rebuttal or or whatever come up with. Uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah. Matter of fact, let's go to um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel thirty eight sixteen. Ezekiel chapter thirty eight. Hold on, uh, my bad, wrong scripture. Let's go to um, Isaiah 30, 34, and 5. My bad, wrong scripture. Salakia. All right, Isaiah 34 and 5. So this is this is uh, future prophecy. So Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in Shamaim. This is Yahushua. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. And upon the people of my curse to judgment, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood and the fatness of fatness and with the blood of the lambs and the goats and the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahuwah hath a sacrifice in Balzra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia, just in case brothers try to run and say that's talking about the people. So right here in this scripture, it's talking about Esau, the Edomite, future prophecy where they're going to be at and it's given the lands where they are at. So how does people get America from this scripture? Where is Bosra at? Where is where is Idumia at? Please answer the question. Where is Idumia at and where is Bosra at? Please answer the question. Yeah, seven one eight two one six. You want to reply to that? Got it. If I'm not mistaken, Bosra, that's the seaport in Jerusalem, if I'm not mistaken. That's Saudi Arabia. Okay, Saudi Arabia. That's past tense. 
But then, like the brothers were saying, you got to include the prophecy too. Second you ain't answer, answer my question. Where's the land of Idumia? Answer my question. Quit running around you it. Calling this one. We we ain't run around to... it. We we have to. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I have to go look in the geographical location of Idumia when Ezekiel is saying that. But that still doesn't evade the issue of what the brother brought out concerning Second Ezra six and nine. When it's saying <laughs> you could go go there. No, it doesn't. It's a prophecy because it tells you that. It's giving you the description of how Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. This right. all ties in with the kingdom of the Most High. And it ties in with Luke, what he said about Jerusalem shall be tried down to the end of the Gentiles. So Esau yeah, is up. gonna be right. in a you got, Esau you is, is, is going to be in a prominent position. Even in the Van de Van Bible dictionary, I don't know what the page is that it tell you that Herod them come out the Edomite bloodline. There's a lot of records out there. I want to respond to that too. Hmm? Yeah, hold on, I see, hold on. Hold on, I see, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on, I got to bring 414. Hold on, hold on, stand by, stand by, stand by. I got to bring 414 in, 414, I know you've been silent for a while. Who are these people that are ruling up over? Are they Israelites? Who are they? Who are these people that are in power? Are they Japhites? You got to show me the prophecy. Who are they? I can easily show you that. Hey, I'm gonna let other people power. talk. I'm gonna let other people talk. Then I, I'm gonna come back to you and answer your question through scriptures. Who are these no people problem. that's in power? Who are these people? Uh, who are these Ashkenazi fake Jew that converted Hello? in the eighth century? That's in the power. Hold on, stand by. Yeah, stand by, bro. I can stand show by. you that. Let let the other brothers yeah. kick it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Let, yeah, I gotta bring four one four. Four one four. Got. Uh, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, I've been holding it for a long time, so I got to I got to backtrack a little bit. Um, one of the brothers said that only the three tribes, only the northern, oh uh, wait, only the southern kingdom, Benjamin, Judah, and Levi, were taken from West Africa. That's false. There's no historical records for that. Um, when you look at West Africa, and you look at the people who claim to be Israelites, they claim mostly northern kingdom tribes, Zebulon. Manessa, Gad, uh, Ephraim, Asher, that's the tribes that they claim, right? So when you look at the 12 tribe chart, they say uh, the North American Negro is Judah, right? And you look at the, and you look at the demographic, the ethnic de- uh, demographic of the slave trade. You had Yoruba, you had Iwe, you had Igbo, you had Fulani, you had Mandinka. You had uh, Bantu, right? All these people claim to be from different Israelite northern kingdom tribes, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if according to the records, most of the people taken into transit on the slave trade that came to North America were Igbo, right? The Igbo say that they're Manessa, they got some Gad among them, they got some Ephraim among them, they got some Asher among them. If this is so, how do we get North American Negro Judah out of that? You can't get Judah out of that. Not saying that it's not Judah here, it's Judah here. When you go to uh, Puerto Rico, right, or where, where where they say, okay, Puerto Rico is Ephraim. Puerto Rico can be Ephraim. It can be, you know, it can be Gadites there. It can be Issachar there. It's just not one tribe there, right? Because the, the Yoruba claim a different tribe. The, uh, the Igbo claim a different tribe. The Igwe claim a different tribe. Like the brother Adna brought out, which is the, the chart logic is that the white men separated all of the slaves and say, okay, this boat of <laughs> Judites goes to America, this boat of Ephraimites goes to Puerto, uh, uh, Puerto Rico, this boat of Haitians and, 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 Seminole, uh, uh, and Simeon go to Hispaniola. That didn't happen like that. Also, the brother said, all we have to do is look at Genesis 49 and see that. Uh, Judah is talking about the Negro because they said he had white teeth and he dipped his garment in wine. How's that? How that? And he drank a lot of wine. How's that an indicator of, of, of who somebody is? I know that's one aspect. Are. That's a trait. I know, one I, know, I know a lot of people. It's not a. It's not a trait. A trait. A trait. Is trait. Is what is? Down, listen, brother. A trait is something that's passed down genetically. White what teeth. What do you think that is? Down, Brother, white teeth aren't passed on genetically, okay? Oh, my God. Who is this guy? I'm sorry. <laughs> Paige and Hesse. 
brother, white teeth aren't passed down genetically. I'm sorry. So you mean to tell me, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Listen, bro. Listen, let, me, let me let me finish. Let me, listen, you've been talking. Because you make a lot of statements, you don't have no evidence. That's all y'all do. You make statements. I'm not, you know, listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you do. I'm gonna let you uh, chime in. Just to write it down. Write it down. <laughs> I'm gonna get to you. I'm gonna get to you. Guys. All right. All right. I'm using. Like I said, like I told the sister, I'm using common sense and critical thinking. If anybody on this line think that white teeth is genetic, you need to go log off your phone and go see a doctor. All right? If you think that only black people drink a lot of wine or, or liquor, you need to go see a doctor, and I and I would hate to see how you perceive your own people. Uh, another thing, like I said, when you do the history, Native American Indians, right, like the brother brought out, Jacob and his wives were black. How did 10 of the tribes become Mongoloid agents? Now, I can see, you know what I'm saying, a lighter skin color, but the phenotype is still the same. I want the brother to ask me to, the question, to ask this question for me. I wanted to answer this question. What happened to the Native American Indians that they look nothing like us no more? What happened to them? I can answer that. They got they got round they got round faces, cheeky eyes, stringy hair. What happened to them that changed their genetic makeup where they look nothing like us? Even the dark skinned ones don't look like us. We can what answer that. that. Go ahead. We can answer that, my brother. What you so saying? What you, what, what, you're saying what, what you're saying is accurate. I know where you're coming from. Um, just like the Japanese mix their seed with some of the people in Peru. Um, um, some of them mix with the white cork. We're not talking about the Caucasian, the Mongolian stock. Which you're ac- you're absolutely correct. Which a lot of brothers out there are not explaining that part correctly. Because I, I, I go to powwows. We're talking about, okay, we'll use the term uh, to clear up this confusion here. We're talking about what they call the Negroid stock. They're still around. You go up into the Hampton okay. powwows, you wouldn't know that they were what they call North American Indians if they wouldn't tell you. They look just like me and you. That stock okay. is being suppressed. Just like all throughout North Central and South America, Veracruz, Louisa, Puerto Rico, the, 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 the bloodline of Jacob which are taking on these different languages through the curse of prophecy of Deuteronomy 28. Those real images of the people, just like when I went to Brazil, just like you and me, they're just speaking uh, Portuguese because the Portuguese conquered them. They were shipped out of Angola. Those were the sons of Jacob, not only on the west coast of Africa and so forth. So what you're saying is accurate. We're not talking about these Mongolians. We're not talking about the mestizo stock. We're not talking about the one they show in in, uh, John Wayne, um, we're talking about the real, authentic one. They look just like okay. me and you. I get, all down get south. We used to mix with them. Huh? Okay. I get what you're saying, right? Mm-hmm. We can we can historically account for where those black Native Americans came from. They came from intermarriage and intermixing with the Negroes that came from West Africa. That's why you can find them in Panama, South America, and throughout North America. But the 12 tribe chart, it says Native of Americans, they came okay. here during uh, 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 the, the Syrian uh, captivity. They got on boats and they came here. Now here, here's, right. a, here's a hum, here's a humdinger with that statement. Here's a humdinger with that statement. When you ask, when you ask random Native American tribes where they come from, they're all going to give you a different answer. They're going to say, "Oh, we migrated from the east. We migrated." You from know the why west. though? You oh, know why, right? We migrated. You know why, some right? say, some some say we never went anywhere. You know right. why, right? And also, too, also, too, also, too, when you do a genetic test on North American, Native Americans that has no intermixing with uh, Negroes, you would see that 96, 90, 96% of their genes come from uh, uh, Asia, the, Mo- the Mongolian, Siberian-looking people. They share no genetic makeup with us, zero. And it'll take a, it'll take a rocket science or anybody to see that they don't share any genetic makeup with us. I agree that Negro stock of Native Americans are our people, but that's a result of the slave trade. It's not a result of them coming on here to here on boats uh, after the Syrian captivity. There's, there, there's no evidence or, or, or proof to back that. Let me 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 let me
Yeah, like I was just going to say, you know, it's not meant for everybody to see. You can all get down. But I'm going to say this. Uh, all these guys are making these uh, opinions, giving these opinions on what they feel, what they Google, but they're not really bringing no scriptorial evidence. Okay, what I read was what's going to happen in the latter days with the tribes. I told you that's what Jacob said, and you bypassed that. I'm not using what happened at that time period. This is what he said, how are you going to tell my sons and these tribes in the latter days? And when you just use your eyeballs and you look at people that carry these traits, okay, and these antics that was recorded, you can figure out who's who. Now, I mean, it's not for everybody to see. I'm not going to argue with you over That's what you see. And like I said, if you're going to take away from this and this is inaccurate, then you give me something accurate. Give us something oh, I got, accurate. I got, oh, I got, some, I got something accurate for you. I got, okay. I got, I got menu. I have manuscripts from West Africa. Are the people? Listen, this is this, this, this a beautiful thing about history. According to scripture, we don't. Listen, brother. Listen. Okay. We don't have to listen. Listen. We don't have to take vague prophecies or make scriptures that's not prophecies into prophecies to impose tribal identities on people that's not Israel. Because guess what? There's people in Africa that never forgot who they were. They still call them. Absolutely. They still call them. They still call themselves God. They never stopped knowing they were God. They still call themselves Vanessa. They never stopped calling themselves Vanessa. They still call themselves Dan. They never forgot that they were Dan. So we don't have to speculate and slap tribal names on people. Like you said about the milk and the teeth. Brother, that's, well, what you mean that you've you got to be able to see it? I can't see it. And it, it has nothing to do with a trait. A trait is passed down. You can look this up on Google, uh, uh, the Western Dictionary. A trait is something that's passed down from generation to generation. You cannot pass down white teeth from generation to generation. So this is, this Drinking is wine. Is, oh, let me make my point. Say, okay. And, and I'm you, telling you, you since, since you coming off at my boy Penny Hassler talking about scriptures only, I dare you. Any precept you pull trying to promote that false chart, I'm going to smash you. Go ahead. I dare you. You going to smash what? <laughs> You gonna smash what? So you gonna smash what? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah, hold on, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's finish, let's finish, okay. okay. I've been waiting almost an hour for you to smash something. Yeah, I dare you to go to some to that chart in the scriptures. I dare you. I'm gonna smash you with precepts. Try me. Okay, it says I'm gonna All give right. you one. What's your smash? Oh, right. I'm gonna give you one. Nah, it I says, get one, get one. You ready? Okay, this is, I'm going to go to Genesis, okay? I want you to explain this to me. I'm going to give you one try. I'm going to give you gas. I know that's my favorite try, too. One of my favorite tries, right? And I want you to give me, I want you to smash this. Said, go ahead. Uh, I already know where you're going. Yeah, okay. It says, gas, a troop shall overcome him. Now, re- remember what, let me read the first verse. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Now, this prophecy is for the last days, latter times. Now, I'm going to read it. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Explain that to me and give me. I want you to smash that for me. Smash that. I want that smash. Okay, so first, first finish explaining it. Though. Are, you saying that, are you saying that prophecy fits the Native American Indians because a troop overcame them? I'm going to say it again, okay? I'm showing you that these these prophecies are derived from what Jacob told his sons, and I said through the Holy Spirit, for the <laughs> latter times, right? Now, you told me that you're going to smash what I bring out. Easy, oh, boy, easy. Got, hold, on, hold on. I'm bringing out this prophecy on Gad, okay? I'm going to read it again. Gad, a truth shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. I want you to smash that. Give me understanding what that is talking about. Smash it. Go. No, you you just reading the scripture. Uh, you're not letting me know. You're not letting me know where no, you're you going you with the scripture. Why gotta let are you? Are you? Know? Hold on, hold on. Let me say. Let me finish. Are you talking about? Are you linking this up to the Native American Indians? Yes or no? Yes. So yes, and your only reason why you're linking this up to the Native American Indians is because a troop overcame them, right? He's back, telling folks. Next call. Next person, please. Hold on. No, no, no. Answer my question. No, you said you can snatch. So now this is this is what I'm gonna say. This is this this is how I'm gonna kill you. I'm 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 gonna kill you like your who should kill the scribes because you're nothing but a scribe with that false doctrine. Now this is what I'm gonna say to you. Smash it, smash it. The truth did did not did not the troops overcome 
the Zulu tribe. Are you Did serious? not the Romans and Greeks overcome the Negroes and brought you us over here to America? You see how he's saying history? I yes told or no? You this is for the last time. You see how you, he's saying history? Because you're going into, yeah, you're going into yeah, a vain argument time, time, about a time, truth. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Hold on. Stand by. 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 Yeah, yeah, stand by. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get some callers out here because we got people standing by. So let's go to the phone lines, and uh, we only got time for comments. So uh, once again, the number is six four six seven one six seven three two zero. Let's go to the people. Let's see what you guys got to say about the show. Let's go to the first person. Let's go to six seven eight six six zero. You live in air. Quick comment. Shalom, shalom. You know, I had to call back in. You know, shalom. Shalom. Yo, good looking at war. Gum, Aparium, his phone died. He got some complications. And uh, you, you brothers did good. I appreciate that. The uh, the comment I wanted to say that you, with, with your, actually, your brothers did good. You got to hold it down. But another thing I wanted to say about the whole Jaffa thing the historical references show that there were nations that were Jaffa that was black. Very, very black. Like the Estruscans, like the Persians. Darius the Mede and the Russian icons show that the rulers and kings of the empire were black. So there's no way that they're somehow, all of a sudden, all of the Japhets are white. There's he no dude, way. He's so ignorant. No, okay, <laughs> look, look up Darius the Mede. How does me saying Darius the so Mede ignorant. is a Japhet is going to be ignorant? There's pictures of him. And Xerxes was one of his relatives. And that's Jaffet, but he's black. The Estrusian oh, was Jaffet, and they black. The, the, the Russian icon shows the empires as black. So you're coming with the white man's doctrine, trying to shove it down our throat, saying that Jaffet is white now, because that's them. They're claiming to be Jaffet based off the name. They're beautiful. That's why they're tying it to themselves. But history shows otherwise that Jaffet was a black people. The kings and queens was black. The inhabitants was black. Point blank, period. You can't even get around that. Okay, so let's, then, let, me, let me rebuttal. Uh, let, let me rebuttal what he said with scriptures. Let's there is no Genesis rebuttal. Two. That's history. Uh, they showed Genesis the black. They had their own statues and their own artwork that there was black. That's you can right. look this up today. The sculptures. All right. All right, stand by, y'all. We got to get some more people on phone lines. Let's go to the next question. Let's go to nine one zero three seven nine. Quick comments. Uh, shalom, brothers. This is Brandy. Uh, shalom, shalom. All my brothers from the um, group. I had a question for the brother that said God said hate white people. When clearly in Deuteronomy twenty three and seven, if the Edomite is a so called white man, thou shalt not thou shalt not abhor a Edomite, for he is your brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, for you were strangers in their land. Now, if he hates the white man, why would he give us a chance to be drafted in after the third generation? Uh, for that, that, that? Yeah, yeah. I'll respond to that. I'll, I'll respond, respond to that, too. Um, okay, that scripture, this is gone. It's on fire. We're not supposed to go out and just hate people. See, this is this what the brothers was addressing. False doctrine and wrong doctrine. Okay, versus true. Those brothers putting out that wrong notion, just hating people because how they look and that. So, oh, the scripture does not prescribe to that, and that scripture is absolutely right. The problem is here, the most I hate the evil. He hates the evil of man. Just One like brother said, said um, Therapy still on it that said God said hate the white man. Now God did hate Esau, but he had every right to. Esau yeah, he hated not- Esau, but the way brother is putting that information out there, I don't deny. He said Esau I hated, and Jacob I have loved. But going even be it's not just how a man look, white man, white man. The brother keep drilling that in people's head. You know, some of them not explaining that it was the deeds of Esau and his spirit. It was the deeds of the Egyptians while the Most High smashed the Egyptian Empire. It was the deeds of the Sumer Kingdom who was black that the Most High hated what they were doing in the Syrian and the Persian and even the, uh, the Hebrew kings and so forth. Put things in their proper perspective and give the right analysis of understanding here. Can I, can I, can I say, can I, can I, can I, can I, 
Can I take them out there? Yeah, hold on, now. I stand. Hold on, hold on. Kind of run out of time. Man, gotta go to the other callers. Gotta go to the other callers. Again, it's me talk for you. You know the number six four six seven one six seven three two zero. We gotta go to the phone lines. Gotta go to the people. Hear what they gotta say. Let's go to what's that? Two zero two seven zero four. You're live in there. Ah, uh, yeah, this brother or not like the brother. He said that the Estrusians, you know, were exclusively Japhites. Now let's deal with some history on. The early inhabitants of Greece. Now, you had people, the Pelexians in Europe, the Philistine land, Cat 4, mentioned in Genesis 10. Is a we have the Phoenician travelers who were settling in Europe, and we have many other nations settling in Europe. Now, how is it that their language more identifies with the Anatolian Hittite language more than the Ascarit, so-called uh, white man and Dravidian languages. Now, can anybody give me any solid proof besides paintings being found? Because many black nations were there, so do we got any proof besides paintings? I'm talking about linguistic evidence or anything, any record of them tracing back to Japheth, that those are they people. Now, I'm asking one question, but I, I know where they're going to go. They're going to go with these Mies things. Now, they like to say, since Japheth... I mean, since no one was black, everybody else got to be black. Well, if, if that's the case, we got to deal with black lions, white lions, and brown lions because all of them originally come from the same color lion. So we, we got to explain how did one become white, how did one become jet black, and why is one brown? Yeah, I want to I take a shot at answering that. Hey, be my guess. want to answer that. Go ahead. I don't everybody think everybody, everybody uh, volunteer. Y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, a lot of those those uh, those depictions and those uh, paintings that they found and statues that they found were actually Hamites that ruled those lands uh, before the white man came in and took over. Um, evidence for that is that they spoke Hamitic languages, and their DNA went uh, back to to uh, Hamitic people, mostly uh, Egyptians. Uh, I'm talking about the Etruscans, the Minoans. Uh, the original Celts, the original Gauls, all those people was uh, hand-medic hand people. And that's all I want to say about that. Hey, hey, uh, hey Brother Sal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Brother, uh, the brother put out uh, Genesis 49 and 19, right? And he said, you know, uh, he said the, uh, a troop should, Gad shall, uh, a troop should overcome Gad, right? And he says that that's a Native American Indian. That's a prophecy. For the Native American Indians, I can give you a, I can give you a precept to Genesis forty nine and nineteen that is talking about the Gadites joining David and they fought against the more the Moabites and the Ammonites. It's not hey, talking can about I, Native American Indians. Can I, can I, can I respond to that, please? See, that's what let I'm saying. Let me let me let me read this. Let me you read ain't got to go no further. Let me respond. To no, that. let me read, let me read the scripture what it says. This 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 is a precept to Genesis forty nine and nineteen. It says. And of Gad, or the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David, and into the hold of the wilderness, men of might and men of war, fit for battle, that they could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and swift, and, and swift as a roe upon the mountains. This 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 occurred when they fought against the Ammonites and the Moabites on the other side of the Jordan. That has nothing to do with Native American Indians. Mm 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 mm. That war yeah, let me hear a Yeah, let me hear a little more Listen, I'm going to tell you what this old man in my neighborhood used to told me one time, and it, it, it corrected me. Listen to this a lot. Hey, 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 Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall be for you in the last days. Every time you guys go against these tribes, you always pull out what happened during that period or the latter earlier days. I said, this is talking about probably for the last days. I told you to explain that to me. Do not listen. You always got to pull hey, something hey, out. With hey, brother. Oh, hey. Give me hey, that. Brother, stand by, stand by, stand by, stand by. Give me the prophecy for the last day, brother. 
You're not listening, man. Okay, next, listen. Next one. The last days, the last days were even during the time of Christ. So what are you talking about? Oh, the, the, problem, the, problem, the problem with the Hebrews, the problem with the Hebrews is this. You want to make everything during this time period the last days. They were calling it the last people. days, the last days during the time of John. So what are you talking no, about? No, What's no, the point? No. What are you talking about, brother? The precept, the precept, 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 brother, listen. Precept upon precept upon the line. Yes no. I didn't say he didn't. I'm telling you that in John, in John. Go study about 10 years and you can deal with it. No, brother. Study about 10 years and you can deal with it. brother. All right, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Order. Order in the court, y'all. You don't even know the Bible. Hold on, hold on. Stand by. I got to go to the next person. I got to go to the next person. You have a lot of people standing by. Once again, I appreciate the callers. Let's go to the callers out here. Let's go to six eight two two four zero. You're live in air. This is Mo Edwards. What's going on, sir? You're doing pretty good, man. Yeah, um, I'm just listening, brother. Y'all go ahead. You can go to the next caller. All right, press the number one, man. <laughs> you can press it again. I'll take you off the switchboard. Um, let's go to four zero four seven zero four. You're live in air. What's up, brother? Shalom, shalom. This is uh. Brother Uzi Yahoo from Atlanta, uh, or Brian, either one. Um, been listening in, just you know, checking out the different brothers. Just wanted to kind of chime in on the Ye Fifth issue. And I'm surprised that none of the brothers really tackled Genesis 9 because everybody kind of, um, one thing you have to realize when it comes to the scriptures, the scriptures is about you build your salvation, your doctrine from the scriptures, but you can't prove all historical evidence from scriptures. So where the white man came from, technically, it doesn't really specifically say that in the scriptures. However, it does tell you what nation they are in the table of nations in Genesis 10 and the pre the, the, the prior chapter in Genesis 9. So if you go to Genesis 9, 27, it says, Elohim shall enlarge himself, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Now, we know the brothers keep on talking about the last days, but this is directly pointing to the last days because there's only one group of people that's over in the land of Shem, and that's the so-called Middle East, which is really Africa, and that is Yafesh people. And you can tell that from Genesis 10, they're going down to the table of nations. Uh, Genesis, Genesis 10, 2. The sons of Yafesh, the Gomer, and Magar, and Madai, and Jabin, and Jabin, we do know that's the founder of the Greeks, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Akinaz, that should be a key word right there, because the Akinazi Jews. Akinazi, absolutely. And, and matter of fact, Akinazi is actually the Hebrew word for German. So if you actually dig deeper, let's keep on going. And Rapheth and Togomar. Togomar, that's actually where the Khazars come from. So if you actually go read the 13th tribe, go and look in the history, you'll see that the, K- the Khazars, who until the Hun is the actual forefather, basically been claiming they're Akinaz based off of Jeremiah 51, saying, because it said, Akonites and the Medes will destroy Babylon. Can so, I ask you a question? What's up, brother? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question, right? Who, in your under- according to your understanding, who today are the biblical Edomites, according to biblical prophecy? Who today is the biblical Edomites? Yes, according the to biblical, biblical Edom- prophecy. The biblical Edomites of the brothers that got scattered during 70 AD when Idumia and Judah actually came together to fight Rome, and they're scattered around. It was just, they were diminished just like in Obadiah. How it says Mount Seir be, and Obadiah says Mount Seir be destroyed, that happened. Petra was destroyed by the Romans. So technically the Edomites, you, had, you remember, Esau married Ishmael's um, uh, wife, and he also That's married true. Hamites. So you have groups of Edomites you have groups of Edomites that had Edomite influence over the Khazars because after 70 AD, most of uh, Judah and just Israelites scattered to West Africa. But you had a lot of Edomites that scattered to Eastern Europe. And see, this is where I had to go into history because you, you realize that when Judah actually took over Edom, they converted them to Jews. And those Edomites were calling themselves Jews. So after 70 AD, they was going around posing as Jews, teaching the oral tradition Torah, and taught that to the Khazars. So a lot of those Edomites got mixed up with those Khazars, and other Edomites, you have the Adumi people in West Africa. And they claim, they're you telling question. you, yeah, yeah, what's up? Let me ask you a question. This is Obadiah 18, verse. And mm-hmm. the house of Jacob shall be... Obadiah a what? This is Obadiah 18, verse. And this is talking about Edom. So I want to ask you a question. 
Mm-hmm. It says, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Now, you're saying that this scripture was uh, happened in 70 AD, that, that Edom was destroyed and done away with? You said this yes, happened in Israel, Israel did that? Oh, brother, the Messiah not, has to come back, so there's a lot of prophecy that has to be fulfilled. There's still a remnant of Edom. Yeah. Well, you no, you can, well, before we go there, let's go to a more logical oh, verse, so we don't have to do a lot of speculation. Let's go to, let's, let's go to Joel 3. You answer the question, Now, answer the question uh, uh, No, no, I, I did answer the question, because the Messiah, so you, when you, Messiah you comes back. I'm going to ask you a question. You no. made a statement. What did you say? say? You, said, you said the Edomites were destroyed. What? I, I said most of them have been destroyed. Now, Wait, when he comes when he comes back, there's still there's still a little. Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. You mm-hmm. want to pass on me? You said they were destroyed, right? I said most of what them. Time period, what time? you said they were destroyed? Around seventy and AD. By who? Around seventy AD. Uh, yeah, but who who destroyed them? I'm asking you. What nation destroyed them? The Romans. So this scripture right here is a lot because it tells you right here that Jacob is going to destroy. Them. So this scripture right here is a lot. There's, no, there's no, well, well, brother, not, oh, not, 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 now you're playing some matches and games because, because no, you're, you're twisting what I said. No, 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 brother, no, no, brother, brother, you brother, you no, 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 hold on, come on, come on, you're asking, the, you're cross-examining me and you're asking a leading question, you're leading me to the answer no, you want. I'm not going to let you do that. No, no, that's, 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 slow down, I'm not going to let you do that. This is what we're going to do. I said most of them have been destroyed. Well, you know when it comes to future prophecy, there's still prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. Messiah hasn't come back. So there's possibly still a remnant of them that is still probably in the quote unquote Middle East that's influencing the Khazars that needs to be taken care of. However, I have a question for you now. You go to Joel three, two. Yo, I yo, I tell him tell him to read tell him to read Obadiah one and nine because he ran he skipped one and nine. Tell him to read one and nine where it gives you a location. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so oh yeah, we, we, we're gonna go to actually before we even do that, man. This is I, I like to have the, the strongest arguments first, just to get them out of the way. Let's go to Joel three. Joel three. Joel three. Okay. And when Joel three, it, it talks about. So I'm gonna get to the, the heart of the matter. You read, you read, read the other stuff. One, one on down. I want you to read one on down. Oh, we can read the whole thing down. When this is okay. Joel three six. And the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, ye have sold unto the Grecians that ye may remove them far from their borders. And then if you want to say the Grecians with Edom, well, we can keep on reading down to the chapter because it's going to de- de- differentiate Edom from e- Egypt and Greece. Absolutely. He's going, going to say... Give me a second, brothers. And then you leave, you're going right here, to 19, and 19. And Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. Now, explain, really me this. Where does it say that we got sold to Edom? Who did it say we, we get sold to? And if you try to say that the Greeks were the Edomites, why would, why did the Most High and Joel separate the two different nations? Hold on, one question at a time. Let's go down and get out of there for yourself. Oh, see, you're not playing fair now. Now, no. oh, the first question. Oh, the first question. Oh, brother. goodness, bro. Brother, 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 brother. Yeah, man, we kind of we got like 13 minutes in the air, man. So, <laughs> you know, we, gotta, we can't, we can't get through all those questions. But uh, man. water sportsman, yeah, hell on water sportsman. I mean, uh, go 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 quickly, real quick, because we we got 13 minutes in the air, man. Okay. Now, you might as well go ahead because it's gonna take a long time to explain. But bro, let All me right, get well, let, let me yeah, Hey, yeah. hey Sark, can, can I rebuttal him real quick? Yeah, yeah, real quick, yeah. All right, cuz he ran the Obadiah chapter 1 verse uh uh 19, right? So let's go to Obadiah 1 verse 9 cuz brothers love to jump around scriptures. So let's go to Obadiah 1 and 9. It says, "And thy mighty man, O key man, which is a location, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mouth of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So once again, this right here is a location, and this is talking about Esau. So let's get a precept to this real quick. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 25 and 13, because through precept we get understanding. Psalms 119. Brothers love to jump around. 
jump around the scriptures. Are you serious? Absolutely. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 13. Go to once 12, again, you, you, still ain't, you still ain't. Hold on, let me finish. Therefore, therefore, thus saith Yahuwah thy power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and I will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from T man, and they of D Dan shall fall by the sword. You still haven't answered my question about where the land of Idumia is. You still ain't answered where T man and D Dan is. Where are these locations, brother? We go to verse 12. Read verse 12, Tyler. Because it's going to say what I just read. Okay? When I asked in that question, Location. Over that, saying the same thing. No, when you go into the, go into the, uh, the, 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 the generation of Esau, T mine is in there. That land, it's in there. Okay? It just mentioned it, just another dimension of, of, of Esau. Okay? T mine, Bozer, all of the different sects of Esau. That's all it is. All, they're all I just gave you few. Yeah, hold on, y'all. We only have like 11 minutes on the air. We're going to pretty much wrap it up real soon. But I'm going to uh, ask one question. And, uh, I appreciate all the poor people that called. We have more callers staying in Bible. We don't have no time to get to all the people right about now. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask one more question, and pretty much I'm going to give the brother some last words to share with the people out there that's been tuning in. But um, I know, you know, we have a few brothers, like three brothers on the panel that uh, agree with the One West camps and everybody else doesn't. But uh, if there is one camp that you uh, look at, and you want to put out there that you uh, either support or don't support, uh, put it out there, which camp on the one West camps do you think is uh, either productive or destructive, and say why, and after that we're going to pretty much um, wrap it up. So let's go to Water Sports, but is there one particular camp out there that you say is doing the work, being that you're on a productive aspect of it, and uh, explain why? You say they're doing what? Yeah, being that you uh, you know support the One West camps, which one of the camps out there that you say can you say is doing? I know there's a lot of One West camps, but is there one in particular that you could say I really uh, look at these guys and they're definitely doing the work? Well, it's, it's like this, man. Like I know, like like these brothers that came up, you know, it, it's, it it rounds off to a calling to me. Okay, I met many brothers in this nation. And there's many different brothers that are called to this understanding. And this understanding is going to evolve. All of us, one day, will be one. We're, going to, we're all going to evolve to the one mind. Those that are truly sincere about this book, okay, and humble themselves, we all, it's going to that one, let me say that in the scriptures. So we're all called to this. I don't really, like as far as camps, now a lot of those camps, I tell you like GMS, they don't miss the mark because that's all personal stuff they're doing. Those are personal gripes. All those, all these different breaks up, breakups that you see in these divisions, I can tell how all of it started, and there's one culprit and all that, Satan, the devil. That's who at fault with that, and they fell into his tactics, okay? But hopefully this thing is going to, it's going to be brought back to one, but the good thing, it had to be broken up so we can reach different regions, but the true men, the true sincere, the men of the Lord, he's going to bring them back together. He's going to merge that. Christ told you this. The Messiah told us this. He's going to bring this thing together. It's going to come to pass. It's not going to go to naught. So that's what I'm going to say. All right, Brother Nasi, is there, is there one particular camp that you could say, you know, I know there's a lot of camps out there. Is there one, though, you can want to identify and put out there that you could say is not doing the work, being that you represent the destructive aspect of it? Go ahead. Um, I can't say one. <laughs> I can't say one. I can I can say I can say most everyone that's pushing Esau's the white man, the twelve tribe chart, America's Babylon. I can go on. That's that's all I that's all I want to say, man. And 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 hate the white man and hating all that. That's 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 all I that's all I can say, man. I I, I try to reach out to brothers. I call brothers my brothers. You know, I get bashed, I get beat down, you know what I'm saying, when I'm teaching this word, going over the precepts with brothers, you know, brothers uh, uh come at me with hate, you know, basically gang-banging Israelites, man, you know, and, and, and it's that time that I, I truly feel that the Most High, I know according to Scripture, the Most High say he's going to he blind a lot of these brothers, man, and harden their hearts, and that's what's taking place today, man. So other than that, man, I just, I pray. You know, and, and, and wish the most I put the Ruach HaKodesh on brothers, man, to, to enlighten them and wake them up from the lies that's been spreaded all throughout Israel, man. 
you know, because it's hurtful to see brothers out here like this, man, teaching this this nonsense. But like I said, I I put out their I put out their precept, the precept. I put out their locations, and I just hope brothers go into them locations when they got time concerning Esau. Because me personally, I know Esau is is different sects of of Arabs. So <laughs> other than that, I let I let people get the floor. All right, man. Then you want to let the people know how to reach out to you, brother? Because we're getting ready to sign off. Any uh, contact information you want to put out there or what, you know? That you oh, that absolutely, man. It's your, it's your boy out here in, in, in Minnesota, Awaken Ones. That's the that's the brotherhood. I don't go by camp because camp is a destroyed name. Um, uh, You can hit me on Facebook, Nasi. That's N-A-I, I mean, N-A-S-I-Y, N-A-S-I, Mitzvah, M A. I mean, M-T-S-V-A-V-A-H, Mitzvah, which is precepts. So, you know, you can hit me up on Facebook, a.k.a. Bakar Precepts. That's who I am, man. Uh, shout out to Chosen Seed, the brothers out in Detroit, and everyone else that's awakening up from these false doctrines. All right, man. I appreciate you coming on the panel, man, calling in on the debate tour for you. Let's go to Brother Basim. I know you've been standing by patiently, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here, Sal. I, I would just yeah. say that, you know, like 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 I mentioned earlier, you know, I see this as an in house issue, but I'm very familiar with the scriptures, Genesis to Revelation, the God of Israel, some of the prophecies that yeah. were discussed and things like that. But uh overall I enjoyed it, man, and, and this is one of the first steps of these these brothers coming together, ironing out their differences, man, yeah. but you know, a uh, special shout out to you, Sal, for making it happen. You know, what I'm bringing people together, breaking down these scriptures. You know what I mean? Regardless of race, color, creed, nationality, religious indifferences, in a nonviolent way, man. Peace and blessings to you, Sal. All right, man. Appreciate your call, brother. Appreciate your call. Uh, let's go to my man from seven one eight two one six, representing the One West Camp as well. Is there one particular camp out there, being that you are representing One West Camp, that you could say is definitely doing the work and uh, explain why to the people? That. Well, <laughs> I don't want to say I want to. I'm representing One West Camp. Uh, our representation in Sweden is supposed to be the Most High and, and the King of Kings. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to put that in the proper perspective. Uh, Christ is the, is the focus what everybody I should be on. He holds the key to life and death. Um, like I said before, um, there's certain things, I mean, concerning the disturbance, I don't disagree with uh, what the brothers addressed, cursing, yelling Esau, the devil all day. That's not the gospel. It doesn't still uh, change the fact of who he really is. And that's another issue. I don't want to go into that so far. But uh, concerning the camps, I would I would direct the people to what um, what John said. As Moses lifted up the staff, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. As what the Mosai said, this is my beloved son, Matthew 75, who I am well pleased, hear ye him. So all our focus is really supposed to go back to the Hamashiach. Um, concerning the camps, to be fair, just like in Christianity and religion, certain things they said was true, um, we all need to be checking ourselves. Um, a lot of stuff that they're doing out there is dealing with heresy. I'm not saying everything they say. Paul forewarned us about this, Second Thessalonians, second chapter. Um, the great falling away before the, uh, the Mashiach appears. And all the other signs, the blood moon, the shooting star, the lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, and the meteorites that's known as Wormwood uh, that John spoke about and so forth. But um, I would direct the people back to the Most High and the Christ. Curse me, man, that trust in man. I'm going to leave it on that note. All our focus is should go back to the King of Kings. Um, a lot of these camps are in heresy. Um, a lot of the Christianity is in heresy. T.D. Jakes is a heretic. Clef no dollar, George Stream. It's not just the brother that recognized the Hebrew bloodline. Um, this whole world is in heresy. So our focus should go back to the Mashiach, and we all need to reexamine. And like Paul said, we need to be taught again because there's, there's heretics in Christianity as well as there's false prophets in Christendom as well as there's heresy in some Israelites that's pushing it, not all. And I'm going to rest on that case. Let the Most High Christ be praised and exalted.
Hello? Yeah. Yeah, so I appreciate you coming on, brother. I appreciate you all being on the panel. And uh, is there any YouTube channels or any Facebook page, anything you want to put out there so people uh, want to reach out to you? You can put it out there now. Well, um, I haven't been on YouTube a while, but I have some uh, stuff up there. I went under the name Sunfire. Sunfire is the um, and I did I did certain things on this issue that uh, brothers are touching on of the uh, to be fair and true of the heresy that is among Israel to separate them from the brothers that are not doing these things. I mean, we all come from one nation. Some just don't recognize the Hebrew bloodline. But you can tune into uh, Sunfire. Um, I have a page up there on YouTube with uh, a couple of videos. All right, man. Well, appreciate that, man. Appreciate you being on the panel, and hopefully we get to uh, have you guys back again. Uh, Panahasi, I, I, I hope I'm not saying it wrong, man. <laughs> 414. That's right. That's right. Live in it. Right. That's right. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, I like messing up of his names. But, uh, yeah, well, yeah what, what, what uh, camp you feel is uh, not doing the work uh, that you want to pinpoint out there and uh, explain why? Man, like the brother uh, Nasi said, Nasi Bisma said, um, Anybody with that that chart, anybody teaching hate for Africans or whatever they teach it, that's off. That's not what the Most High told us to do. It's not historically sound. And for our people and our nation to be taken seriously, we have to really commit ourselves to real studies, whether they be historical or scriptural, right? Uh, let me give my let me give my outro. Um, me, everybody know me, Pena Hesse, mm-hmm. as being a pro-African Hebrew Israelite. I say black African Hebrew, right? That's what I stand on. Uh, these camps that are teaching hate for Africa, I'm going to make your existence as a camp excruciating. It's going to be hard to teach against your own country, your own place where you come from. It's going to be really, 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 I'm going to make it really, really tough, really tough. It is not to be tough to be combative or contentious, it's tough to get you to wake up and claim your full heritage. After you after you do that, it won't be no Kemet coming after you asking for body. It won't be no black Afro sisters telling you that your book is a white man's book. The only reason why they're able to do that is because you're overlooking the mother of it all, which is Africa, right? And my, my Facebook page is Black African Hebrew History. I got tons of information on there. I put it up there for free for everybody to interview. All right, man. I appreciate you as well, man. Uh, hopefully, we get you, back, get you back on the show in the future. I appreciate you coming on the panel. Debate talk for you, uh, brother Shaala is called. You know, drop. But he called back in from uh, some kind of app where he can't press the number one. And we have a whole lot of people calling in, so I can't. I can't find the brother. And uh, the other brother from uh, representing the West. Don't want to miss the best show via internet, Debate Talk for You Radio. We have the best debates in the world. We have the best special guests to present the information to the masses out there. So make sure you tune in every Thursday and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash Debate Talk for You. The number is 646-716-7320. If you want to tune in via phone or via Skype, once again, that number is 646-716-7320. Save it to your cell phone. Let people know that the Big Talk for You is official. Check us out.